I'll call the meeting to order at 704 is what my computer says. Sorry for the lateness. And we can, um, I have to go back and forth to my agenda and all that. So we have our call to order and pledge. I don't know if we have a flag. Oh, Dave's got his flag. Yeah, he does. So, good. so please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, which it stands one, nation, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you. <clears throat> so, public input. I don't see any public. Um, so, we'll, and no correspondence that I know of, other than what we have that's specific to our. Um, agenda items unless Kathy got something at the last minute she shakes her head no so we're good to go so um, we have approval of the meeting minutes uh, from our regular meeting of November 10th I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes I'll make the motion so Dave Olson makes a motion to approve the meeting minutes from November 10 2020 second and Roy makes a second. Is there any input or um, observations on those minutes of anything that needs to be changed or corrected? Nope, we're all good with that. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, anybody opposed? And anybody need to abstain? I think there's one, I think oh, there was someone that couldn't Make it at the last minute, or are we are we Dave, Dave or, uh, was it yes. Last? So Dave Forbeth was not at the meeting. So Dave needs to. Right. I missed the train. Yep. Uh, and Fern is not here, but he needs to. He would need to abstain too, but he's not here, so we're good with that. So we're good with the minutes, and we can move into back and forth here. Our old business with our um, school construction project. So. Does Gerilyn want to jump in and start with that? Sure, only to hand it off to Jim since Ken couldn't be with us tonight. Jim's going to give the progress report and um, fill in all the other blanks. Sure, um, you're stuck with me tonight, Nancy. That's fine. We'll start over at Johnson uh, in the gymnasium. That wood floor is, has been dispersed. He's got about two weeks of um, to complete and finish, get that wood flooring down. During that time, the back of kitchen areas and the health areas will be finished off. There's some floor mitigation that has to go on there. Um, we do have a, an issue on the site work with earth movers and some COVID cases that have has pushed the paving a little bit. We still expect him to pave next week. We're just waiting for confirmation of that. And that would be around the, the back of Johnson, at least as far as the basketball courts um, but it would still leave him access to work on that field without destroying that access road. So we would stop that pavement there. So he does have some concrete and some pavement to do back there. We expect those to be done next week. Um, we do have some movement on that the, the front vestibule of Johnson. The steel is in fabrication. He'll be starting the install on that on December 5th, which right. is a Saturday. So he'll work Saturday and Sunday to get that steel up. He might need uh, another day during that week. Uh, to, to finish off what would make up the the small portion of where the ballistic glass goes, but it does get us a step closer to finishing that vestibule area. Um, good. good when it's done. Um, yeah. That's good to hear, Jim. That's good. If there, are, if there are any questions on Johnson, I can get over to Rockwell or we can address any concerns or questions you have with Johnson. Jim, I have a question on Johnson. So when when will we get a TCO for the cafeteria and the um, and the so um, music spaces? Ken has uh, Chris and Tom set up to come out December first, which is Monday. Okay, I thought they were coming today. It was on a it was they had a meeting scheduled. Um, sorry, Terp. They were. I wasn't aware of that. The date I was given uh, was December first, but I can I can find out if something happened today. If it did, it, that would be news to me. Yeah, because they were they were asked not to come. They had a meeting scheduled for today, and they were told it needed to be delayed. So I um, um, I need to know when 
when do we think it will be um, viewed and and they'll give they'll be able, they'll have what so they need to give a TCO. So the only issue that there is at this point is sealing off the front vestibule, uh, the construction area. Uh, the that would be building that partition wall across the wall that we have to demo to get to the, the vestibule itself. That's okay. the only issue that we have outstanding with them. Um, but I'll again, I'll confirm that, that Tuesday the, the first is the date when they're coming out if, and find Tuesday, out why they wouldn't December have done it. December 1st? Okay. Yes. And but, then um, the other, the uh, as of the last uh, Thursday's um, trailer meeting, the, the outstanding issue was that um, um, in terms of ventilation, because I followed up then with Chris Baldwin, and he said he needs to be assured that proper ventilation uh, exists in that area before he'll sign off. So are, sure. are there so, any, is there anything stopping that? No, so sure, that, that came up, well, it didn't come up, but that was, Dr. Carver mentioned that to me uh, at the end of last week. So we got the letters in from Action Air for that for Chris. Um, and for also Rick Bilecki. I haven't heard anything back that was that they were looking for in addition to that. So I'm, I'm assuming that's been taken care of. Okay, so the, the goal is 12-1 for TCO. Okay. So Jim, um, Jim, a, a few of us did a little walk around uh, last week with sure. uh, Bob and Terry and uh, came up with a list which we had of major items, not a huge like punch list sort of thing. Oh, we saw were major items at both schools, which we passed along to Gerilyn. And um, I believe most of them, some of them were on radar already, probably most of them, and they were going to be discussed at the um, OAC meeting Thursday. And so the few things that you brought up, which, you know, obviously the vestibule, it's good to hear that there's progress being made there. And um, I think looking at that whole back area of Johnson, when we were back there, there were some, you know, items that came up. We saw a lot of progress, which was great. I mean, we saw a lot of overall progress, which we were all very pleased with. Yet there were a few things um, that we had questions on, and they may be things that that were brought up and 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 are um, continue continuing to have progress. Um, Roy, I know you had something yeah, I, that you observed in the back. Yeah, I was, well, there's a couple things outside, Jim. I was concerned about the uh, amount of, of uh, process that they were putting down, uh, you know, being that there wasn't enough. So I was hoping that, you know, that's why I had mentioned it. I was hoping that someone would have checked in with earth movers on that. Uh, you know, I was, uh, you know, uh, probably one of the bigger items also was inside the building. I had some, still some concerns, you know, about the uh, sewer backup problem. You know, I kind of wanted to bring yeah. that up. And, we we uh, have, uh, Geraldine, and, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, what we've decided there is we're going to have um, somebody, because it, it wasn't the, the the person who was able to give us the um, the pitch on the pipe or point out the belly in the pipe isn't able to do what we're asking. But essentially, it's just got to be set up where they're going to uh, jet it out again. And, and I believe, Geraldine, we're doing the entire run, correct? No, not the entire run. We're only go well, I, I guess it depends on what you think is the entire run. Joe, we were just doing that branch to the to the main um, branch line in the corridor by the elevator, correct? Right, that's what, right. That's, that's what I thought. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. So just the offshoot that goes towards the nurse's station um, office. Is, the, is that part of the old old area or, or is that the new section installed? I mean, is that generally where it backs up is right where they come together? Yes, that's the, and that's where they've identified that there is a belly in the pipe there, about a 16 foot long belly. Um, right, right. I don't know, the, the, the cleaning of it might not do what you want, but it'll definitely check an item off the list. I, I agree. Yep. Yeah, and I think that that was the, that was the point. That was the recommendation from DTC that the next step would be to auger and clean the pipes, power kind of power, you know, pressure wash, yep. and then if that still does not um, solve the ongoing issue, then we would look at lining the lining that section of the of the sanitary pipe. I I agree, Joel, and I I agree, Jim. You know, step by step. So I'm, I'm pleased to hear that it's it's being worked on. 
and then the the back parking area where we were watching or we you know they were working on actually they were there doing doing some work that day roy pointed out he thought that there wasn't enough process as far as a sub base for the paving but now jim is saying that um, earth movers has been out or or at least reduced um yeah as, as far as yeah, that that area is not that area is not ready i was back there today that area is not ready for paving yet so okay i've yeah. got some prep to do and that's i'm just waiting to get a date from them find out exactly when they'll be back full force they are okay. telling us we'll have some people back tomorrow but i don't know how many at this point hey hey jim just for my own reference is is it a problem with the covid people with the yeah. paving guys or is it the earth movers guys? no uh I, I as far as i know right uh, you know all american is okay it's 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 um earth movers themselves okay that's that's what i was so that could affect other things too that's why i was just trying to get it understood. yes yeah that's affecting you know we've got the fence to do at rockwell for the playground there's mulch that needs to get spread at johnson and rockwell right um, so yeah it's uh, it's affecting those two just getting the playgrounds finished off okay yeah that's helpful to know so good thanks and then another question that we had um at, at johnson that i didn't hear you bring up in that whole back amphitheater area there's some steps that come down and we're assuming that there's a railing that's supposed to go there or i would yeah that's that's my buddy qsr so yeah we've got decent amount of railing to get up back there to, to make that all safe so right um okay. so is it appropriate to talk about the uh the wall or whatever around the dumpster or is that something we should handle later on can, um, can i add um, something to that um yeah we we found a, a real good spot for those dumpsters that would really? um yeah and it's even better for the custodians actually um so i'd like to maybe show somebody on the site if it's possible uh, you want me to show Ken or Ted or who, who do you want me to show? If you're going to be out there tomorrow, Bob, I'll be out yep. there. So if you want to just coordinate, we can. Yeah, get I that will. Set up. I will. Yeah, okay. because uh, it where the custodian the custodians actually came up with it, and it's a it's a better place for it, and the just truck curious. and the dumpster curious, can pick where, it up as well. We're just curious, where do they want to put it? Okay, as you you know where the chiller is, right? Sure. Just just before the chiller in that little alcove. You stagger yeah. both. You stagger both of yeah, the, it. both of the uh, dumpsters right there, and then it's yeah. out of the way. The truck mm -hmm. can come right down, pick it up, take it right out again. So it's yeah. it's oh, and the guys can come right out and, and take care of it. So I don't know. I I'll it. show you. Yeah. Okay. I'll second that motion. Well, I don't. Think they should have been there in the beginning. Uh, hey, Richie, I agree with you. Yeah, that and plus that doing that wall, they're still undercutting the existing uh, foundation. That's going to be a problem too. Yeah, yeah. So does that mean um, the slab, that slab that the dumpsters are sitting on, um, is going to get moved, or is it going to get demolitioned and a new slab poured? Yeah, demo. At the demo, demo. you're not moving that slab. <laughs> I don't know, pick it up and put it on something. Have a bunch of kids get dragging it or something. So hey, think with that, on that, if they ended up doing that wall, it might end up getting partially demoed anyways. Right, right. So in moving it and getting it out of there, it gives us some more options as far as what to deal with, how to deal with that um, softball field and the steep oh. bank embankment there. It would help out. So it helps two different things. Did we ever get a price on the wall? The wall, which wall? Uh, for the softball field wall, where the dumpster is. No. I don't think we ever got to that point, Rich. We were trying to get some plans together. I don't think we even got to that. So we did get a sketch. We got we got sketches from Milana McGroom um, through Joe for a couple of alternatives when we thought it was just going to be a retaining wall there to um, to, to modify the, the existing slope or the planned slope. Now that we're now that we're now that we've got this idea to actually move the dumpsters and, and in any case so that slab was going to go away because of the work that needed to be done with the retaining wall. Right. Now with an alternative location for the dumpsters, we need that information to get back to Perkins Eastman so that they can look at it with Malone and McBroom and just and and rework the rework of the slope that we wanted them to do. Am I correct, Joe? 
So we won't need, we likely won't have a retaining wall, but you did still want to address the steepness of that slope going down to the softball field, correct? Yes. Yes. Correct. Well, uh, John Menti, I, I think they still need some bit of a retaining wall down at the base behind the, the uh, dugouts. Right. We, we talked about extending that wall a couple of feet up along, but also having the retaining wall behind the dumpster. So if we can eliminate that dumpster, we're going to be saving a little money there. Yeah. It won't be as high. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and plus that, that drain right on the bottom, it will work a lot better with all that hill right the way there. So I, I, I think it's a good thing that we're looking at it still and not making a decision on it yet. Agreed. So Joe, how do we get this information to you and to Perkins Eastman? I mean, it, it's, it's nice for Bob to look at it with Jim tomorrow, but really the design work has to go back to the site engineers. Yeah, I guess if, if once Bob and Jim look at it, if Jim can send over a marked up plan where the dumpster is being proposed and I'll get that. That's, that's no room. problem. And sure. then they could look at once that dumpster is out, if, the, if there needs to be a wall by the softball field or what size or how long it would be to make the grades work then. So that, so that brings up a question with um, not this past time we walked around, but the time before that back in September and early September, when we looked at um, where the generators were and question whether there were enclosures designed to go around the generators and those have to be installed at some point. Are there enclosures? Jesse, Joe shaking his yes, head. Yes, there are. Yes. Okay. So then that has to happen at some point. Um, just hasn't yet. We just, I think Bob had brought it up. Like they can't just be like that. Kids are going to be climbing on them. Mm, correct. Yeah. Well, I, I have a question too. Um, if that pad disappears, do you have to extend the guide rail? Hmm. One more section or a section or two? Because the uh, dumpsters probably would have had an enclosure. No, no, no. The the guide rail stopped just shy of the dumpster pad. Right. But the so dumpster... now with the pad gone, right. will, will you have to have another section of uh, guide rail? Yeah, I, I would think so, Bob, because you don't want anybody driving off the edge of that. Yeah, that's, right. what, I, that's what I was getting to. Right. Yeah. The dumpsters probably would have had some sort of enclosure around them from the guard rail around the dumpster. Mm. So that would have continued that. So now we're going to have to have something there. Yeah. Okay. So that's got to get looked at. I'll, I'll point it out to Jim tomorrow. Yep. Uh, I have a question. I don't know if it's the appropriate time, but uh, can we talk about the gas meters? At, at Johnson? Both schools. It affects both schools. Sure. Um, sure. I, saw, I saw the flurry of emails back and forth with Ken and Action Air. Maybe Jim can throw a little, little commentary on sure. that. So, so what it comes down to is, you know, have been involved with EverSource, and really, that long story short, the, the question is, is do the meters allow enough gas to pass into the building to feed the units? Because what's been happening is, the, uh, you know, in particular, the boilers had been dropping out because they weren't getting enough. They were flaming out. They weren't getting enough gas. So, so right. So. So when, the, when you look at the gas meters themselves, they appear based on their rating that they're undersized. Whatever source has said is yes, they essentially they buy the meters, but they make some sort of modification to them that allow them to uh, provide a, a larger volume of gas. So whatever source is asking is that some additional testing be done um, on the building side to check pressure at certain points so that they can, I guess, verify for themselves that their meters are doing what they think their meters are doing. Obviously, the, the contractors see it as this is an Eversource problem, that the only reason these things are happening is because the volume of gas isn't being delivered. So what we're trying to set up now is at least get this additional testing done that they're talking about. And I don't know that we have that nailed down at this point, only because this, is, this just started to evolve this afternoon. Uh, it, it looks like Action Air digging her heels in. Yeah, and, you know, the, and I think Bob, you and I had spoken about it. it, it it's always easy for a sub to say, "Oh, it's it's EverSource," you know. The, mm -hmm. So you got to you got to chase these things down. You got to get everybody in a room, and you know, the, when there's no place left to hide, then that's usually when you solve things. So, right. unfortunately, we had set up a meeting with EverSource last week that, and EverSource was the driving force for the meeting. They didn't show up, 
but I think at this point, um, what we're going to focus on is, is seeing what we need to do to accomplish this testing so that we can at least, you know, it's like anything else. You're taking away excuses. Let's, let's get this information and then let's, let's see what we have from there. But Bob, correct me if I'm wrong. I, you know, the Action Air did set up the boilers at Rockwell to stagger their start. Yes. And I haven't heard of any issues, you know. Uh, no, no. No, I, there, there, has, there hasn't been any because there, there's a delay time, you know, so well, then again, we really hadn't had that sub-zero weather yet. No. But, uh, hopefully you're, you're, the you're meter will be in place before that. Right. Um, so, do, you, do you remember I you mentioned, do you remember I mentioned to Rick about the different springs in the diaphragm? That's the modifications yeah. they're talking about inside these meters. Okay. And okay. Uh, so you, you may see, you may hear some of that as well. Um, but you know, they, they were talking about running all the boilers on at the same time to measure the drop. Um, that's going to involve not only action air, but it's going to involve uh, the automation system. Yeah, the control. The automation is going to say, no, no, we don't need it. So we're going to be right. electronically bumping heads. So we have to, that all has to be, they have to come to the table too as well. Yeah, and, and you, know, I, you know, the plumber should be there. It's his pipe. You know, I, again, I, if, if the if the you know the boilers being located where they are the gas meter being especially Rockwell where it is you know I, I tend to think that it may be a volume issue but you know with with what they're asking us to test yet yeah, is going to be a little coordination that's why I don't want to tell you tonight yeah we got that set up for tomorrow or whatever there's some pieces to to make that happen it's not as simple as somebody just walking in there and yeah because we'll, we'll have to fire up the kitchen we'll have to fire up the boilers the domestic hot water heater. We're going to have yeah. to really put a load on it. And then again, yeah. you can't forget middle school. We have to put a load on middle school as well, because okay. you want to you want to see what's coming into that road or, or how much yeah. is being drawn off that road. Well, that's I a did, good point. Yeah, I, did, I, did, you know, I was thinking of it in terms of just the school. So that's a good point. So would it be a good time to try to set this up during this time while the schools are on distance, distance learning? So yeah. that yeah, anything we can do now, we're going to try to do absolutely. Um, but okay. as, you know, as Bob pointed out, it's it, you know the subs kind of dig their heels in, so it's it's going to take a little bit of massaging. But I you know we we'll get them there. It's just uh, it, this just developed today, so we'll have to you know take tomorrow to figure it out and see who we need to get there. And you know, that's a good point as far as if if the typical AM start that school down the road is doing the same thing Rockwell is doing, then. You know, you're not getting a true reading unless we're we're simulating what's really happening. Do we have whatever sources um, records are for what we're supposed to get for pressures and discharge and all that fun stuff? Do we have anything like that? Well, it's two pounds. That's the. No, that's it. So yeah, Dave. What they did is, you know, uh, it's got to be two weeks ago. Yeah, they came out and just confirmed that they had two psi, but that really wasn't the question. Yeah, and we weren't questioning that. That it was, you know, it was more of a volume question than anything else. And right. Well, the two pounds are on the on the load side. That there's more pressure uh, in the street line. Yes. Right. Correct. Right. right. Okay, so you're working on getting that all coordinated, Jim, and hopefully. Yeah, there's there's a few more pieces. Next, yeah, get it done within the next week and a half. While you know, there's now kids in the school, et cetera. That's ideal, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. <coughs> and then um, a, another thing that came up while we were doing our walk inside, Jonathan, were all the trip ha hazards that we brought up last time. Excuse me. Roy, I don't know if you want to jump into that. Yeah. I have to... Well, on the stairways going out, you know, on the top of the stair where the, uh, where the tile ends about two inches short of the nose of the stairs. And then also along that entire hallway that goes into the gym. I think we're questioning, I, I, you know, I, I suppose it's questioning design, it's questioning install. I, I think it's just a question of, of, you know, it's a huge tripping hazard. And it's in fact, even in some areas, it's already the aluminum uh, uh, plate there is already getting bent. And it can't stay like that. Right, and I think I don't want to speak for Joe, but I think the 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 tile in the Carter he has an answer for that a transition strip, and if you okay. sent it, Joe, and I haven't seen it, I apologize, but there's a transition strip for that, uh, and then there over I believe you're referring to stair four where the uh, the ceramic tile stops at the at the top. There's a 
a bit of a dispute with the, the subcontractor for a nosing there that would then allow the that tile to then continue down all of the steps and then that small landing out out of the building at the bottom of the steps there. Okay. Okay. But yeah, so for the, the for the corridor, there's supposed to be a, a half inch um, elevation difference between the tile and the existing terrazzo with that transition strip to make up that difference. Um, but it appears that that um, elevation is slightly higher. I think it's five eighths in some spots, um, and and you can see that the the metal is not performing the way it should be because it's more than half an inch. So they're going to re replace that with a rubber transition strip that'll okay. perform better, and then adjust it to a half inch. They'll slope that last tile to get that half inch difference. So it would come out a little, extend a little further, or not. Right. It'll be a two inch yeah. transition. Right, okay. that'd probably be better because that the metal piece that's there now just seems to be um, too make, close. It's, it's too much, too too. It's like too short, too quickly. It's, it's right. Yeah. yeah, it needs to. It, yeah, so yeah, we we're addressing that. Okay, okay. and then the stairs too. This yeah, the stair is um um being it, it'll be tile with a, a a nosing on it, and that will eliminate that trip hazard that you're seeing currently in the field. Just at the top of the landing or will it go down each step? The, the tile goes down each step. And okay. then there's a um, um, distraction and um, uh, nosing that prevents um, slippage that's okay. built into the tile. Okay. okay good. Good, good job, thanks. Um, what hey, you, the a couple of the things that came up too which we were, um, we were glad we were there it was just after school was getting out. So we got to see teachers in the classrooms, um, kind of what they've done was back in September, um, they, they hadn't set up quite as much, but what they've done to work with the space they have, it's the, the classrooms are looking much more like classrooms. Um, we, <laughs> well, when we get over to Rockwell, we can talk about, you know, we had to put a stop it in a couple places that we thought were was going to seem kind of awkward, but they've made the best of it. So I just have to say, in general, again, kudos to the entire Board of Ed. I mean, not just the, the Board of Ed staff, but the, you know, the principals in the school, the leadership, the, the, the teachers, et cetera, are all doing what they know how to do as far as making it be a school that the kids can feel comfortable in, et cetera, even though there have been changes and work going on. Um, still going on as a school working out really well. Something we noticed was that there's an awful lot of exposed conduit, which we, we knew was going to have to happen. That was part of a big part of, you know, wanting to do renovations is bringing electric and, um, you know, smart boards, et cetera, et cetera. There's no way to put it in the walls, but having it exposed in some places, I think it still needs to be painted. So it looks like it's the same color as the walls. So I'm sure that's part of a punch list. Um, it was actually brought up by a couple of teachers that we we talked to. Is it going to stay like this? No, it's going to be painted the same colors as the walls. We're just going to have to deal with it. It's it's the industrial look. Um, so um, obviously that's in those places where it does have to get painted. That's probably on someone's punch list, hopefully. And we know there's lots of other punch list items. We weren't making a detailed list when we were going out there. We were looking at big things. And I don't know if anybody else has any Rockwell or not Rockwell because we haven't done Rockwell yet, but Johnson related um, items that they saw or wanted to bring. Hey, yeah, yeah, I have one. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, John? Yeah, uh, now that the kids are out of school again, and I, I don't know if the process has started about the insulation that was going to be put in at nighttime. Can that be moved up to the daytime? Yeah. So, well, that has started. Um, okay. Yeah, he started, uh, I want to say last Friday. We had anticipated, we, you know, we had spoken to Dr. Carver on Sunday. She let us know what she was doing. So we had to set him up to figure we could take advantage of that and get started on Monday. But it turns out that the teachers are staying in the classrooms oh, and okay. uh, he geez. can't spray with any of that, unfortunately. Yeah. So okay. that was a question. Tonight. Yeah, that was a question I had asked, you know, when I had told Gerilyn what I had heard. You know, we didn't know whether the teachers would be broadcasting from their classrooms or from home. So 
Okay. okay, that's that's yeah, understandable, right? Yep. Yep. So have, at Johnson, the principals kind of made the teachers aware, and I think more of them are going to work from home. Um, so that yeah. may help, Jim. And then over at Rockwell, I know we didn't get to that yet, but in terms of replacing a lot of that countertop, um, the principal is going to work with them to work around the teachers that are there. And most of the teachers in Rockwell only stay until about 1215 each day. Okay, so and I think I, I think um, some of it can be done. I think some work can be done in each building to kind of help you guys out, but it wasn't it wasn't a carte blanche as as a, as I think a few of us had originally hoped for. Yeah, and so the, the the spring there can't be anybody, so that's okay. It is what it is. It's what we had planned to do anyway. The Legier, the countertop people, um, they're working through Rockwell, changing out the that was that discoloration issue with the countertop. So they are working through that up there, Good. and that seems to be going fine as far as interacting with teachers or working around the the staff that's there. Good. Okay. I had one more one more item that we noted. Uh, with Bob when we were walking through the hallways, the uh, sealer or sealant that they used on the on the floors mm -hmm. is flaking off in many, many areas. You know. Yeah, we, we actually it was the custodians that brought that to us. So we have Higgins coming out again. He's going to clean that all off and, and reseal it. Um, you know, he didn't have a good answer as to why it did, that didn't adhere. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's why I wasn't wasn't too sure if it wasn't wasn't prepped right or what. But boy, it, there's it has to be something. You know, they they did have an issue with the uh, hand sanitizer kind of wreaks havoc on that stuff. But it, it doesn't make sense that that would be for the entire length of the corridor I, there. So right. I, I something agree. did not adhere properly. So he's got to clean it off and he's got to do it again. Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. And, Anybody and else? Yep. Yeah, Nancy, we, uh, we already talked about it in, at Thursday meeting, those um, those plug-in connections for the uh, blinds. Um, right, they're yeah. they're kind of hanging and dangling. But um, I, I believe Ken said that, or no, I think Joe said that there's a better plan for that. Or Yeah, I had that on my punch list as well, that they should be installed in neat enclosures and it shouldn't be looked like it's an extension cord. Thank do you we know. know what those do you know what those enclosures you want them to look like, Joe? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I will have to uh, we'll have to talk hey, about hey, it. Joe, Joe, question for you. Why do they have to be plug in? Why can't they be hardwired? I mean, um, I, I'm never gonna unplug them. I mean that's <laughs> yeah, I mean I guess they, they could that, my thought was that they that they could extend the um, back box right down to the um, lines yeah. and yeah all they need is a little whip a little whip coming out of the box to connect it yeah they just kind of stopped them short above the windows and then connected the wire from the shade into the back back box so not sure why they did that mm. so but also, remember, we're, remember who we're talking about joe so we're talking about uh, ferguson and <laughs> what you know. the drawings show is an actual junction box at each of those locations right that's how they that's how they get to that point um you know we can it's it's an electrical connection so i don't know what type of enclosure you would put that in um well, i'd almost rather rather see them hardwired to be done with it and, yeah, yeah i mean that's fine too yeah yeah normally what they do is they have that little metal flexible whip will come out of the box and just drop right into the top of the uh the shade into the shade yeah I've done that before. That's it's it's just a little metal. It's a flexible whip. It goes right in, and then you know you square them right off. You make them all the same size. But like Jim said, we're talking about Ferguson, so that's two thousand yeah, dollars yeah. a whip. Exactly. Exactly. But so is there something shown on the drawing? Is that what someone said, or? <clears throat> No, what you have is you have a, a junction box shown on the drawing, and then you have a specified shade. And then the you know, and uh, it's uh, it seems like every job but there's always a, a conflict between the shade person and the and the electrician. But in this case, it just shows it just calls for that whip coming out. Now it's all existing blocks. So what do you do with that? You, you can't just coil it up and leave it there. Which is how um, it is. <laughs> yeah, which is how which is how it is. 
So uh, it just seems the way they have it there, they almost could have just cut those those extra cord right off and just hardwired them right in. Yeah, what, that's what I'm all, saying. Yeah, just make it permanent. It, it that exactly, Bob. It it seemed like it could be done to, you, the exact same way, just cut off the excess and hardwire it in. So. What you're saying is not unreasonable, and I think it's the ultimate solution that you want to do. Um, you know, yep. trying to keep it simple, Jim. I wasn't trying to make it into a, yeah. a big. Yeah. But I, I agree. Ferguson's another world. So. Well, hey, you know, Jim. One other thing too, um, we should take advantage of the fact that the kids are not in, and do uh, the the uh, media center, that real high one, because you're gonna have to get that lift in there. So okay. probably now's the time to do it because we can move the furniture yep. out of the way. I'll make a note of that, Bob. Okay. So then that just that makes me think um, since Thursday's Thanksgiving, there's going to be no OAC meeting this week unless you're going to do it on tomorrow or Friday. We were not planning on having one this week. Okay. But Jim's making lists. Everybody's making lists yep. of things that, that – because the big thing I think is going to be, and I think it's still – you're still trying to figure out a schedule of when the teachers are there, when the teachers are not, and when hopefully in the next couple of days this week and next, all of next week, when can um, you get in and do some things like, you know, Bob suggested the blinds in the media center where you got to get a lift in there to do it. Um, you know, when can you get some of that stuff done? And I think, Jim, you may be, you know, each day trying to figure out what you can do and what you can't do as far as who's there and who's not. Sure. Okay, if anybody has anything more on Johnson, jump on it, otherwise we'll move yeah, on. Nancy? Quick question. Go ahead, okay. Rich. Uh, does uh, Earth Mover, did Earth Movers get the change order for the field and are they gonna start on that soon? They, they did get the they did get the change order, but based on where I see them at now, I'm not hopeful for that. Uh, you know, this this winter, uh, you know, I've spoken to Eddie about it several times. Um, you know, my priority with him is to get him to finish that contract work and and get us out of that basketball court back there. Right. Oh, yeah. That's okay as long as he he's aware that he has the work to do. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yep. All right. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. There's a lot right. of dirt there. Yeah, and. Is that what, Gil, is that what you had to? Yeah, I was going to say uh, where, I, if they do just spread it at that location, uh, it'll raise the elevation high, pretty high and create a plateau. And is we should think about an alternate location to move some of that dirt so that it's level uh, yeah. with, well, the, with the driveway. Well, Gil, you're, you're, uh, maybe you're not aware of it, but that's going to get pushed off and the field is going to get made longer. Um, yeah, I saw that, but the there's a fence, and isn't that the property line of that, the? No, uh, the fence gets moved. That gets another thirty feet long, wider there. Oh, big difference. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yep. Okay, so are we ready to have Jim give us a little update on Rockwell? Yep. Okay. Okay, over over at Rockwell uh, in the gymnasium, look, um, they're starting to paint the ceiling this week. Uh, we've got the flooring in there scheduled for the week of the 14th. That's, there's only a wood floor at the stage, so that'll be brought in the 7th to get that acclimated. And the 14th, there's a, uh, it's, a, it's a pourable floor that's in there, so it's not the same setup that, that we have over at, at, um, at Johnson. Um, back at the bus loop there, we finally got QSR, there's the steel installed inside the building so that we can have Massey Glass finish that small vestibule back there. I would say that by that week of the 7th, we should have Massey out of the way and that we should be looking to turn over that opening um, to the school. Uh, right. they, are doing the, they are doing the counter replacements uh, over at Rockwell, Legere is. Uh, they have not started the spray foam. They are going to do that after they finish up at Johnson based on his pace now. I would say that's two to three weeks out before he's over at Rockwell. Um, and those are my Johnson updates. We do have the issue with COVID with earth movers. He's got mulch to spread. It's that's holding us up from finishing that fence. We've pushed the fence out to the seventh on the, around the playground. Hopefully that gives us enough time with earth movers to get him out of the way there, but that should, that should put a, 
that should finish up the playground area. We have submitted the proposals for the um, that back entrance, the, what, what was the bus loop entrance, mm -hmm. uh, the two different proposals. So if a decision's made on that, we can put that ball into Earth Movers Court. I'd like to do that to get them under some pressure to try to get that paving in, that, that final paving that needs to be done while we do the paving at the back of Johnson. So if we can make sure that gets resolved this evening, that would be terrific. Jim, what about the um, the bathroom at Rockwell of Florida has to be demoed, not the schools? Yeah, out. that that is going to be the that Christmas break. What I'm concerned okay. about there is that's rapidly approaching, and uh, we were still waiting for some pricing, uh, and I may need to bring in this uh, alternate steel person to, to price out putting the new metal deck down. It's not that big an item, but uh, I would rather rely on that than you know. It, it not getting done. So um, there's there's that work and then the, the drywall work that needs to be done. We're waiting on some pricing from Verdi on that. So it's I, I feel a little more comfortable that telling you that, yeah, we're going to nail that on that Christmas break, but, the, you know, we got to nail the pricing first. So uh, a little concerned about that, but that is the game plan to, to get in there and do that during that break. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Do we have the pricing for the driveway, Geraldine? Yeah, we're going to talk about that during um, PCO review later on, make the choice between the two options. Okay. Um, can I ask, Jim, did you say that the mulching at the playgrounds is done or still to be done by Earth? No, he's, yeah, he's still got some more to do there, Geraldine, over at Rockwell. And then, uh, then that fence has to go up. So right now we've got the fence set for the 7th. Um, it pro they don't need that much time, but we had to we had to push him off in, because of what's been going on with Earth Movers. Sure, um, but we had tentatively, Joe, we had tentatively set up Malone and McBroom to come to inspect the playgrounds on the 1st. We probably need to push that off a week. Yeah, I haven't given them a date yet based on our last okay. meeting because... All right, I had, a, I had that written down, but okay, so that's tentative. And... Um, and that reminds me uh, to answer a question that Bob, you had last PSBC meeting about the playground um, spare parts. The, um, Altiplay does have a maintenance kit for each playground that they need to turn over to you. And they Good. also want to do a walkthrough with you and custodians and whomever might be maintaining the playgrounds um, sort of as a, like a, a little training, training versus handoff. Um, but we won't schedule that until after we get the certification on the playgrounds from Malone and McBroom. So you, we're probably a couple weeks away from that. No problem. No problem. Okay. Uh, hey, Jim, I have a question. Do you think the landscapers can um, spread that uh, material for the playground? They'd be physically capable of it, yeah. Um, you know, the other problem with that was that even the fence guy had COVID issues with getting his material. So um, oh, but we okay. ended up pushing, we ended up pushing, he was ready for the that first week in December, but we ended up pushing him to the seventh just because of what we have going on. Um, I can have the discussion with him. You know, it's really gonna be a question of, uh, you know, spending earth movers money and yeah. you know, them being okay with that. Right, if it's somebody's contract, then how does that get? resolved. I think we need the mulch for the certification, but I know the schools want the fencing before they use the playground. So it kind of all comes together anyways. Right. That, that's a must. Yeah, there's a big drop off behind that. We'd have to have the fencing. Right. Correct. Right. So um, what about the roof at Rockwell? Okay, so the uh, Insulation has begun of the ductwork. I would say he's got less than 10% of it done, maybe 15% of it done. Wow. Some weather issues the last you know week and a half, but uh, he is progressing with that. I don't think that the coping metal could go any slower, um, but it is progressing. Um, you know, he is painful that particular company, but uh, it is progressing. So Bob and Dave, we're gonna David Horvath, we're gonna take a walk around. I don't know if you got a chance to do that or not. Yeah, we, we Dave and I we were just talking about it prior to the meeting. Okay. So there's progress being made. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, he's got the ducts. The duct stands are in. He's he's insulating now. That should start to tighten up everything on that roof. Okay. And David and Bob are going to do a little check on that. Okay. Absolutely. And um, what about? I don't know what else to call them. They're a design feature, but we're looking at them as headbangers in the front of Rockwell School. <laughs> All those things that. <laughs> that's what I'm calling them. The fins. Those things. Look at that. It's in Joe's picture right behind them. Yeah. yeah. So it's the sunshade devices. They're, they're the sunshade devices. See them in the picture behind Joe. Joe, are you cold sitting out there in front of Rockwell School? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is what? When was this? This is in October, I think. So it's still warm. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that being looked at, taken into consideration of people walking? Kids, kids probably won't, but others might. Well, well that, that area, if we're going to use it for buses, you are going to have kids congregate in that area. The little ones won't be a problem. It's the, it's the taller ones, the adults. I think they're going to wrap their head. And that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. But from, is that, so is that, walking? Going to become, is that going to become the bus area or is the bus area going to stay in the back where it's supposed well, to be? Regardless, it's if, if it's a hazard, it's a hazard regardless if the bus is there or a car is there. Right. You know, if, if someone's walking up that sidewalk and it's an adult and they sit on that little ledge and get up, it's all over with the crying. Should we paint them orange? <laughs> Should we wrap some pipe insulation around the bottoms of them? Well, tacky. I know. Take them off. So we're 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 taking a, a, a second look at that. Okay. See um, if, okay. if anything needs to be done, and okay. if so, what? We could paint pictures on them of people banging their heads so that people are. Anyways, that's sort of something we all looked at. And I can't think of anything else. Oh well, we already brought up the media center and that spray insulation being done up there and but that's exposed and so how's that going to be finished so it doesn't look like a bunch of spray insulation you do have the intumescent paint on top of it um, I haven't seen what that finished product looks like I was going to take a look at that tomorrow to see what he got done tonight well um, so but the spray foam can't be painted can it uh, it gets an intumescent paint on top right. of it all right so right. Nancy are you talking about the Foam that's sprayed on the deck or so on the wall? There's two There's two areas. There's the spray foam that has to go on the, on the, on beam. the beam. Right. There's yeah. that. But that gets the also, intermittent paint. Right. And then there's, um, so we weren't sure what was happening there. So that answers that question. Then there's the little sort of soffit things, which has the some, radiant ceiling panel. And you can see the fuzzy edges of the, is there an edge that goes? Yeah, there? there's a there's an axion trim that needs to be installed on that. Okay. That's good. Um, you, it's um, it's installed, where have I seen it installed? In, the in one of the buildings. John, on the art room at Johnson. Yeah, okay. art room at Johnson. I think it's in the crawl room at Johnson too, okay. as it installed. So it, it needs to, they need to do that same condition at Rockwell. Got it, okay, that's good. Bob wants to know when they're going to change out the network card in the room, at, <laughs> so he can get the because he can get the controls going. No, no, it's, it's the alarm, the alarm. Oh, the alarm. Okay, that's the alarm system. So security. Yep. Anybody have anything else with Rockwell questions or? Jim, are we 12 1 for Rockwell also for the TCO? No reason not to. Same thing with the ventilation. So uh, I know over there, there are no, uh, you know, no walls to be built or anything to be done. So. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay. So anybody have anything else on the construction update? Even if you had to jump back to Johnson? Any other input? Anybody have questions other than what's on the rest of the agenda? You want to talk about the Weston Sampson report now, or I think that's further down the okay agenda. No okay. Yeah, yeah. Check out your agenda. Okay. Um, 
So the next on the agenda, next bullet is the FF&E technology and playground update. So we got a little bit of playground. So is there anything else that we need to know? Um, no, only that the playground work is complete from the playground, from the UltiPlay side. So all of their installation work is complete um, other than this final walkthrough to, to um, kind of show a staff um, what's up with the, you know, with the layout. Um, on furniture, we are up to date with all punch list issues uh, with the exception of one vendor. And now that the kids will be out of the school next week, we should have a, um, an easier time scheduling them to come. They were balking at coming after, after school and working second shift. So we're working on getting them in next week um, to do their final work. Um, I know on technology, we're, we're probably down to maybe one or two um, visual display boards that still have issues. Um, ESC has been in there numerous times adjusting sound levels and cords and troubleshooting with the teachers and making sure that they're using the right software. So I think we're, we're whittling down to the last couple of um, punch list issues on that part of technology. And the security systems are still sort of up in the air without being turned over to Bob. And that's primarily due to infrastructure issues with Ferguson. Um, in the case of the cameras, ESC has come in and re-terminated a bunch of cables. And so we suppose, or um, the consultants at D'Agostino suppose that the issues with the intrusion system probably are a similar issue that there's some pro quality control issue with the way they terminated the connections. So um, we're kind of trying to work through that. Um, and if, if, it, if it comes down to it, have ESC pick up um, some of that redo work as well. Um, so we're just, we're still working through punch list issues on the security system. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, yeah. Since, um, a little time Monday and a little time um, uh, Friday with um, ESC or, or the camera guy. Yeah, I, I gave him the list of the cameras that I saw that they're either upside down or looking at a wall, and uh, so they went through. They made a lot of changes, and but I still have some additional um, problems with the cameras. I'm not sure if it's a an IT problem or it's the camera problem. So um, I. That guy Albin, who oversees all that, yep. uh, he wants me to meet with him tomorrow and, uh, and look at my list. And uh, he he wants because he's he's curious why we're not viewing all of the cameras because I can only view six at a time, <laughs> and that's not that wasn't the original plan. We should be able to see much like we're seeing right now with all these cameras. Yeah. So um, I, I'm working with him, you know, specifically with him. Good. So I'll give you a quick update on that. Yeah, thanks. And, and then, then Bob, I wanted to mention back to playgrounds, Bob. One of the things that was a little different with this renovate to new was Dr. Carver had to sign a document <laughs> attesting that we would we would have a, um, a a playground maintenance contract. So we'll have to talk to Alti Play about that because you had to guarantee the playgrounds for 20 years and you had to tell the state we were going to have a an annual inspection maintenance contract in place. So oh, that, that, that's 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 fantastic. Yeah, so we have to do that. Yeah, but you know the problems you and I had with playground. Um, is this vendor the same vendor or the supplier? Because no, we want the same. We want to use we we want to use the same the same people. And I have their stuff everywhere now. I have it at Barry too. So it'll be one vendor. Just like my boilers, all they'll all be the same. Good. It'll all be one, yeah. Okay. Anything else other than the kids really want to go out and play on the playgrounds? <laughs> It's terrible to see it. I know they get to see it every day and they can't run out there and play. I said if there'd probably be, you know, February at 10 below zero and eight feet of snow on the ground. And if they can go out and play, they will. If that's their first opportunity, I'm sure they'll go out there. All right. So um, the next item, unless we have any more ff &E technology, et cetera, we've got a budget review.
Yes, budget review. So at Johnson, um, based on all approvals through the last um, building committee meeting, we are billed out on the entire project to about 85%, which I think is, is, um, is accurate and probably a little low. Um, construction is billed out at, to about 90% at Johnson, which I, I, I again think is accurate um, according to the progress that we see. And at Johnson, um, we still have a little over $1.9 million in the owner's contingency to work off of. Um, at Rockwell, a little bit farther ahead on billings on both the, the, uh, the overall project and construction, we're at 90% on the overall project and 91% on construction. Um, invoices approved. Uh, at Rockwell, uh, of course, right now we're tracking almost $160,000 over. We've overspent the um, owner's contingency by about $160,000. And the reason we can do that is because on a combined project basis, we are still looking at the bottom line down, down um, almost to the very bottom of right now tracking to close out the project with 1 million, about $60,000 left in the owner's um, combined contingencies between the two projects. So what we're seeing here uh, again are the, the current PCOs that we'll look at today. And if we assume that everything on this list is going to be approved at the number, the number shown, that's what I've, that's what I've um, tabulated into this total of one, uh, 1 million. $63,000. And again, we've tried to project a number of future uh, PCOs that we know about, have updated the, um, or actually this isn't updated. Um, we're looking at, uh, you're, you are still looking at additional services proposals from Perkins Eastman. And then again, we have some line items that we know we're still tracking under um, the budgeted line items. So same format that we've looked at before. We're looking at total uh, future costs on each school and netting out the combined contingencies um, to show that, that we sh still should um, complete the projects in total about a million dollars under the approved referendum budget. Okay, so um, I, don't, I don't think we have it on as an agenda item, but this would be a good place to look at um, how is the progress of going to um, the Office of School Construction on the additional abatement that we had at Rockwell and seeing about getting that covered as far as reimbursement, et cetera. I can give you the update on that. So um, Geraldine and Dr. Carver crafted a, a letter and we have someone at the Office of School Construction that wanted to work with us and review it and have it, it the way it needs to be laid out um, so that it probably would pass muster with, um, with the director. So um, I, I spoke with her the other day and I promised her that you know by next Wednesday, I would have it the way that she wanted it. So she wants a couple of columns and, and Geraldine, I may call you if I have any questions when I do that, but I plan on working on that Monday and Tuesday. And then I'll, I'll review it with Geraldine and with Dr. Carver, and then we'll send it back up to her for a final review. And if she's good with it, we'll put it on letterhead. It did not sound like it was going to be an issue if we lay it out properly uh, that the abatement um, the additional abatement costs would be then eligible under Rockwell and the budget for Johnson would be reduced by that same amount. Okay, that's good. So it sounds like some progress and good progress, um, good news progress. Yeah, I think, I think part of it is, of course, because it's been tracked so well, and I credit Geraldine with that, and, and also with the relationships that we formed from the very onset of this project with the Office of School Construction. So I think, um, the, and you know, they kind of had a gentleman's agreement about it from way back when, and um, it sounds like they'll honor that. Good. 
and I think it's it's um, important to point out that the costs that that all those costs have already been incurred, and they're they're embedded in this this budget analysis. Mm -hmm. So by asking for the, the state to increase one project's budget, it, it allows us to, um, uh, these contingency monies essentially go, go away. I mean, the, the overage on the contingency at Rockwell, but also it allows for us to apply for reimbursement for those additional amounts. So while the two projects are coming in under the referendum budget, we should be able to maximize the um, state reimbursement um, by going through this exercise. Yeah, which is important. I think you know the most we want to get the most we can as far as the reimbursement goes. So great, that's good to hear. Um, so and the order. next thing on the agenda would be the change orders. But if you want to flip that around and do the boiler room, um, no difference. Yeah, why don't we do the boiler room? Um, I. It was just today that John sent out the um, updated proposal or their proposal, correct? And I did upload it to the shared drive. So if anybody didn't get the email or didn't see it, um, we can. Yeah, I talked to um, Malcolm Beal today um, and having a, a conversation with him and, and actually having a conversation earlier with Gerilyn, there, there was some uncertainty on the boiler room work itself, um, if they did any remediation or, or removal of concrete in the floor, which we did not, we poured over the original floor. So there's some wording in the draft that he's gonna have to change to indicate that. Um, and he said that was probably the biggest change that's gonna have to be made on his part. And he was just curious if we had any other changes on this draft proposal. He felt from doing these with other school systems, um, that this will be a, a easily uh, approved by uh, the the uh, regulatory authorities, the, the state and the feds. Um, it's a pretty detailed draft report. Um, and one of the things I, I, I'm glad he put in there, uh, when they talked about remediation of, of the uh, paint um, next year, uh, it can be done either sandblasting or uh, ice blasting. And, and I, I think, when the town goes out to bid on this or sends it out for uh, for a bid process that you should look at the ice blasting because sand blasting is gonna give you a lot more um, waste to dispose of. And also that fine sand can get into a lot of the electronics and in motors in that, built, um, that room where the ice blasting is basically um, evaporates, it's gone. Um, it's a little bit more expensive on that end, but a heck of a lot cheaper on the disposal end. And it's, uh, again, you'll, you'll eliminate a lot of the dangers of getting that fine sand into any of the electric motors and components and so forth. But that's something down the road we can discuss. So hey. at, this, at this point, John, is there something that, I mean, you said that there's some wording in the proposal that needs to be updated based on information that we, you just got. Yeah, yesterday or today. That's that's the only change. Okay. So is this John? something? Is this something at some point that we'll need to approve or? Uh, yeah, he's gonna once he. That's why this is a draft. Um, he's just looking for any comments we have tonight. Um, I'm gonna talk to him tomorrow, and uh, then he will do a final revision of the uh, uh, of this report, um, and then it will be approved by us, um, and then he would go start the process of. Um, Regulatory agencies. Review. And then there was also a um, a cost, a page with costs on it. Yes, he he's. This is what, as an engineering firm, uh, he estimated what the cost would run. Again, uh, high end, a low end, and a high end cost to uh, get the uh, floor and the little bit of the wall uh, remediated. Fifty three thousand up to sixty eight thousand. Okay. It'll be a one-time cost. And is that, Geraldine, is that something that could be part of the um, kind of switch over state reimbursement thing? Because it's some remediation or is it something that, are we pushing it a bit much trying to do right. that? So it's, I think it's a timing issue because this certainly would be something that would, that would, it's no different than all any of the other abatement that we've done. 
um, in Rockwell. Um, I, but because, um, well, the work would need to be contracted for, completed and invoiced, I guess, in order to add this dollar amount to the previous um, request. Okay. And I think that we're at a place with the with the request for an increase in in the um, in the grant approval where we'd have to stop the process in order to wait for this to happen to add it on. Got it. So it's it's you know I guess kind of up to the town how they want to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, if you got the green light to go ahead and do all this. How much interruption would it be to the boiler room? And how long will the plant be down? Um, I don't think it's gonna be a, a, a long period of time. I think if they're if they go in there with sand blasting and ice blasting, I mean, things could still be running. Um, it just would have to be, especially with sand blasting, things would have to be covered up in plastic. Okay. And that's gonna be, that would make it more labor intensive too. It okay. take a lot longer as compared to, um, Probably tarping areas over where they where they do ice blasting. Okay, be a lot quicker. And then second question is actually for Terry. Hey Terry, could this be a cap item, capital improvement item? Well, this would have to be within the project. I'm not going to add this as a separate town item, right? Mm -hmm. I I think it would it would want to be a part of the project. Yeah. And, now, and then, you know, there's going to be, um, every year there's going to have to be a cost um, involved with a, uh, uh, what they call a white sample and an air sample once a year. Uh, that would have to be, you know, obviously, buried on the school um, in, their, in their budget. But that's, you're talking a couple hundred bucks. A, a, a firm comes in, like a Jim Twitchell's firm, it takes a, a white sample and an air sample, gives you the analysis, and you keep it on, on file in the school um, for the legalities of it. Yeah, I do that now with the asbestos, the three-year plan. Right, right. No different. And, and the other kicker in this thing is is uh, the town would have to agree that if they're ever going to demo the school, they'd have to remediate the rest of the PCBs. Well, I want to tell you something. There's nobody on this call that's going to be around when that school gets demoed. <laughs> so I'm not worried about that. Hey, John? Yes. Uh, did you mention that there was no uh, cement removed from that floor? Yes. I think there was a couple areas that were cut out and replaced. No, they're not in that boiler room. The, the water line wasn't cut out? You know, you know what Richie's talking about? Well, well, they well, added the stairs. They cut out a large yeah. part of the floor. So the there, was, there was some work done in that boiler room. Yeah. Hmm. You'll you'll have to get the, you'll have to get the records from Jim or Ken on what exactly was done in there. Then if 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 they did do that, if that's the case, um, you would have to have some type of record what they did with that demo. And, and if that was done by NIRAM, then they probably have a record of it, don't they? The day he came, he saw that large cutout and a discoloration of the concrete. He said, "This looks." Uh, brand new concrete I and mean, it was because that's where they cut out to put the pipes in and in, in the back stairs. You would, would have to kind of figure out what's the square footage of what was removed then. But somebody should, if, if that was sent out as, as, as strictly um, construction demo versus was it sent out as has waste demo? Yeah, I suspect it probably went out as construction demo because it was before we had tested the floor paint and found out that there was an issue. But yeah. I'll ch I'll check back through those records. Okay. And if, if we once we find something out, I'll have to let him know, um, you know, and see how they want to handle it from there. So once we get that info, that might change. Would that change his proposal or his, his report at all? Do you think, John? Um, it, it's it, he's probably going to have to mention it that it was it was um, disposed of as construction demo because testing was not done and. It was you know unknown it was and how much approximately how many square feet of um, cement debris was removed okay so, yeah um anything else on this you nancy gonna to, you're gonna have to jump in and talk because i can't see you if you raise your hand because all i'm seeing is the screen 
Gerald. Nancy. Too. Yeah, Terry. You asked about the state, and I they were pretty clear that they'd like us to get that up to them and wrapped up quickly. So um, I wouldn't hold that all up. Right. Just yeah. this item. Yeah, right. Okay. Anything else from anybody else? Okay, we have change orders now, correct? Yes, we do. <clears throat> um, let's see, at Johnson, we're going to be looking at seven change orders tonight. We're going to start with the vestibule soffit. I wish that these were in some sort of order. Um, so in Johnson, where the new vestibule is going in, um, the, the location for the interior set of vestibule, do vestibule doors requires a soffit for the doors to, for the door assembly to connect to, to hang off of. Um, and uh, so this is a change order in the amount of $2,377.29 to create that framing and soffit. I'll make a motion to uh, approve that change order. Second. Uh, Dave, second. So it's change order number 83. Yes. And the amount of, as Geraldine said, $2,377.29. So we got um, a motion from Roy. Dave seconded it, right? Yes. Any, other, any other questions or discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Okay, and if there's any opposed, that's how we're gonna, again, I can't see your hands, so if you're raising your hands, if you need to um, vote no, please shout that out loudly enough so we can make a record. Motion carries, thank you. All right, we also have change or, proposed change order 91 at Johnson School. This is to add a nosing at stair four. Um, this is the stair near the um, boiler room side of the building, the gym side of the building. There is there is a sort of a, um, how can I put this? A disagreement about um, interpretation of drawing where the sub did not see that nosing was required on this stair. Um, I think Joe, if you wanna jump in, your opinion is that there was a typical detail and it should have been um, assumed that that nosing would go on the, on the stair, but That's we were correct. sort of at a um, kind of a, um, Kind of a place where no one was giving on that uh, on those interpretations. The cost of the nosing on the stair is one thousand three hundred and twenty nine dollars and twenty one cents. And it, in my opinion, it is a little ambiguous in the drawings as to whether this stair required the typical detail or not. So, um, motion to approve. Dave makes a motion to approve uh, change order proposed change order number ninety one, in the amount of one thousand three hundred and $29.21. I need a second. I'll second it. So Gil seconds it. Um, question, is that um, the place where it's just short of finished at the top landing that we were just talking about earlier? I believe right. this is a different stair. Okay. Joe, if you're... No, that, that's no I think it's the same that. stair. Oh, it that's is? Stair four. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why it's short, is because they're still deciding it, what they're going to put in there. Right. Correct. Okay. Sorry. So, but this is the change order. Just put the nosing on the landing. No, it's the nosing on each of the treads. Okay. So the entire, every tread. Okay. Correct. All right. But I thought um, I I thought we were talking about. Tile also, Joe. I thought that's what uh, they're talking. It is, uh, it is the the nosing is an integral part of the tile install. Okay. So uh, the, I the threads get tile and, and the nosing. I know it's I know it's not a lot, but I, I I do have a little bit of an issue with that. I I can't imagine that we're going to design something that's going to be two inches short of the nose of of, of the edge of the stair. I mean, well, I, but as Geraldine said, it was the way that they interpreted the drawing. Yeah, this, this stair install is not complete. And that's why you're seeing that step 
if I'm correct, Jim. Is that right? Correct, Jim. Right, and and we're we maintain that the detail is typical, and that the the nosing is called out in other typical details of similar style and and um, right. quantity. The contractor says that that particular detail that's called out for that sale does not specifically call out for the nosing. And that's why they're saying that this is a change order. So this is for the nosing, but the rest of the tile is just not complete yet. Correct. Correct. That's not going to be a change order. Correct. Correct. Got it. Any other questions on this one? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Uh, right. Uh, also at Johnson PCO 95. This is for outlets um, at the ceiling in the administrative suite to um, power the security monitors in the in the three rooms. Um, for whatever reason. Um, power for the security monitors was not indicated on the drawings and we need to add these outlets. And until we do, the schools don't have, do not have access to the dedicated monitors that monitor all the cameras. And that's just as it says in the admin areas? That, that's correct. There are three areas in the admin um, suite that require that get a dedicated monitor. The security cameras can be accessed by, um, you know, by regular computers or by phone apps and stuff like that. But the administrative um, offices have a dedicated monitor to dedicated monitors to um, review the security cameras. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion that we and I assume this has all been vetted out through Ferguson, like this is a good price or has it already been done? Well, so we've already had that discussion that, you know, $1,500 or $1,000 an outlet is, is high, but as we keep saying, there, there is not, and there's no um, indication that there would be any movement off of that, those numbers, even um, when the engineers come back and say it's worth about 350 bucks a piece or something. So this is the number that we've gotten from Ferguson and, and this is the, this is a cost that, need, that requires review. So is this work done yet? It is not done yet. And um, the schools keep contacting me and asking, when are we gonna, going to get those monitors? So, um, yeah. And there's, you're saying that you, not you, Geraldine, personally, but there's been some back and forth between Rizzo and Ferguson and this is it? This is it. Hmm. You're basically <laughs> saying it's 3x what it should be. Yeah. What was the question, Dino? Three times what it should be. Basically, that's what it looks like. Yeah, I don't know if we have much choice. We just got to keep moving this along. So. Well, I kind of, you know, when I have people come in, it, it usually runs me about eight to nine hundred dollars a receptacle they get put in. So yeah. it's not completely too far off the mark for me. I don't know where three hundred came up, but I don't right. see. And I, I'm guessing that they're running it through some conduit that has to come from someplace that's not right so close. Yeah, true. It is not just the cost of the receptacle. There is there is wiring back to the. Yeah. To to the um to the panel so yeah right that's, that's where the cost comes in yeah and so that's a good point thanks david i'll make a motion so we can discuss it further because we should be doing that first so make a motion that we approve proposed change order number 95 for additional duplex receptacles in the admin area at johnson in the amount of three thousand two hundred and seventy two dollars and twenty cents i'll second it that's john menti any more discussion or have we already discussed it enough is there any other locations at johnson that have it or rockwell yeah that we have another pco similar for rockwell i think they only need two receptacles there um so it's a little less but similar pricing similar scope 
Any other questions or input? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No. <laughs> Nobody yeah, you know, I oppose it. <laughs> who, who opposed it? Who's that? Hey, Bob, Jim and Arrow. Okay, Bob opposes. You got that, Kath? I know you're nodding your head. I can't see you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You didn't have, I figured you did. So you always do. And now what do we have here? And we have change order 96. Um, Joe, do you want to explain why we needed to change this flooring material, please? Uh, yeah, so the, the wood flooring that we had originally designed for the platform um, was going to end up being two inches higher than the exterior platform, which would have caused a tripping hazard. Um, we looked at doing different options of transitions between the fold and glass door, the egress door from the platform and from the ramp, um, which would have, enabled, would, would have enabled us to keep the wood flooring. But in the end, we've determined that it was better to switch it out to LVT um, for this room, which is also a music room, um, and eliminate all those transitions. So that's so a this would be a wood look uh, LVT flooring uh, in lieu of a uh, wood a, uh, actual wood floor. What's the credit on the wood floor? So there is no credit on the wood floor. It's already been purchased and owned. So this is a credit for the installation of the wood floor that nets out of the um, <clears throat> the cost of the of the vinyl tile nets out of the credit for the installation and still results in a credit. But you also own I don't know how many square feet of wood floor. Uh, and what am I going to do with that? I don't that know. eBay. Yeah, the tag sale. <laughs> tag sale. Put it in the attic. So how, how did this, um, it was the deck of the... the... The wood flooring company won't take it back and I mean, it would pay a restocking fee. Has that been looked into? Well, we even asked, we asked we about that, and apparently this is a custom order um, that cannot be returned even for a restocking fee. So, did the did the platform end up being built smaller than it was supposed to? No. What wasn't coordinated was the platform and the outside concrete. Got it. So the, it's the outside concrete that was. It was too low. Too low. Painful, very painful. I also see on that list that, that it doesn't include the price of uh, the folding partition tracks. I see that too. So what does that mean? Hello. Yeah, that, should, that should be there in the original one. The, the, so the, the, it, now the it's got now it's got it, it's installed and it's got to be lowered. Who's going to do that, Jim? Um, Joe, did we issue a detail for how that's going to work with the vinyl tile? Uh, no, I, I, when I talked to Ken, he was going to have the um, um, folding partition contractor lower it. So there was no RFI for that or any um, condition for that. Um, so is that going to be another change order? Of course. My guess would be yes, but I can get an answer for you. Uh, chase that down, and if there needs to be an RFI, we'll get it submitted to Joe. I, I would still like to bring up the fact that now I'm stuck with all this material. I barely have room for storage now. I agree. 
so so why did the platform on the outside why did that concrete end up on at the wrong height it it ended up at the, the exact height it was designed to what wasn't coordinated was a site engineer with the finish of the platform height right and then i don't want to get into a whole discussion of of construction sequence but when it was brought up to us it was uh way too late for us to make any adjustments to the exterior so we had to look at alternate solutions um, which was either creating transitions within the wood flooring um, or to switch to the lvt so the good thing is it's a credit the bad thing is bob has to find a place to use store or use a bunch of wood flooring. I'm going to store it in Joe's basement. <laughs> so um, well, I'd it, like to I'd like to see the total price, Nancy. I, you know, I don't want to end up with a $14,000 amount to, to move the partition, but the tracks around and I have no idea what's involved with this. So do we have that cost? We don't have that cost yet. Jim said he's got to get together with yeah, that. And forgive me, I don't see that information here. So I'm, I'm not as familiar with this item as Ken is, but I'll follow up with him. My concern with this one would be when we spoke to Higgins, this was at a minimum of four week lead time on the material. So it's not going to be released until he has a change order. Right. Uh, with holidays being where they fall at this point, I'd be, I'd be concerned about lead time on this this vinyl tile. But if that's, you know, if that's something that we, we can certainly get it nailed down uh, with, with a, a, a rather quick conversation with the. Uh, I'd, I'd like to, you know, I'd like, I'd like to release it, but I'd also like to know the, the total price here. What, you know, we're, that's what not we're unreasonable. I just wanted to make it make you aware that there is a, you know, a little longer lead time on that stuff than I thought there would be. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm hearing that for all over. Same thing with vinyl siding. So, so Roy, you're recommending we table this until we get a complete price. Well, it's, it would be a separate change order, obviously, but we would want to know if there's a an additional cost. It is a credit, but are we going to be washing it out with a cost right. to lower the uh, folding partition track? So That's that. So if you're lowering the folding partition track, are you lowering the entire folding partition? The partition stays the same height. A reasonable assumption. Wait, so wait, Jim, you what did you say? And then Joe, what did you say? I would think I would think that would be a reasonable assumption. But Joe is saying that the partition stays at the same height. How do you make up that difference? Because you're lowering, you're when, by lowering the track, you lower the door with it. No, I, I get that, but you, then you're lowering the entire assembly. That's what would make me concerned as to what the cost would be for that. So I know. Yeah, I hear you, Jim. Because that's structural. Once you get into that, now you're talking structural because of the weight. So if you're lowering the folding partition track, you're lowering the bottom of it, but you're lowering the top of it too. Yeah, the partition itself, the height of that doesn't change. That's, I think right. that's what Joe's trying to say. That doesn't yes. change. But physically, how the track is attached to the building has to be now lowered. So that's where you get a little more involved. I don't want to shoot from the hip and tell you, yeah, that's not a big deal. I, I, that question needs to be answered for you. But that's, that's my concern, Jim. That's, that's exactly what I'm concerned about. Is there a possible... A possible way to, to keep the wood floor and do some type of a transition strip to the cement on, a, on, a, on a, some type of an angle or, or, or something bad? Yeah, yeah, we could do that too. I mean, it's it got to be less than $14,000. And we don't have, and Bob Jebonero doesn't have, you know, a couple hundred square feet of hardwood floor that he has nothing to do with. No, Joe's, Joe's garage doesn't have it. <laughs> it's, I think it's a more than a couple of hundred square feet. Well, whatever the numbers, yeah. But the point is, is yeah, if we can get some look at some type of a transition strip to go from the original floor height to the uh, to the to the decking out there, I mean. So, c c Joe, you're saying you looked at everything, but now, so is this 
it goes up to the track or does it go beyond the track and then outside? So right, you're long talking about lowering the folding partition track. You're talking right. about a trip hazard between the flooring yeah. and outside. Where's the trip hazard? The trip hazard would be at the, the exterior um, glass door and the door, the egress door from the back of the platform. And that's why I said we can put a chunk of a transition strip in there. It, yeah, it would have to be a, 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 a mini ramp basically because it, it's a two inch drop. Okay. Which they have those transitions. I actually had researched all that and was almost getting ready to issue that. And we thought this would be a, a, a better solution. Can, can we look at that and get a pricing on that? And then we can, because again, once you start lo looking to lower the door and raise up the track and, and this $14,300, you're, you're looking at probably eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000, I'm gonna bet you. And I can't believe a transition trip is gonna cost nearly that much. Yeah, but you're, plus, you're, the, plus the door will be higher from the outside and less chance of water getting in exactly the floor and stuff. But are, are we talking about the transition, a, a transition strip? You're talking about it in two places, actually, Joe. You're saying that back entry door where they come in to get onto the stage platform and then where it goes outside, correct? Yeah, it'd be the two exterior doors that would require it. I, I think we should get a Joe. Can you get a price for that? The two exterior doors, including the folding partition door. The the folding. If we keep the wood flooring, that nothing happens with the folding. There's two folding doors. There's one on the interior, one on the exterior. Right. So the one on the interior, if we stay with the wood flooring, doesn't change. That stays exactly as it is. We'd only be creating transitions to transition between the elevation on the exterior to the top of the wood flooring, which is about two inches. We look at the idea of a transition and see if it's doable and not also creating a tripping hazard. No, it would, the transition would not create a tripping hazard. It would eliminate the tripping hazard. OK. Can we look into that and keep the mm -hmm. flooring and all like that? Yeah, OK. Keep the weather in mind too, for concrete pouring. For concrete, for where? Well, that transition is going to be made out of concrete, correct, Joe? No, we would do the transition on the interior. Oh, oh okay, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, because I don't think the tra concrete transition to the exterior would last very long with the but way it's, it's poured. Too thin. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We would do it within the wood flooring. Okay. All right. So we're so, going re so to revisit. You still have to lower the door on the exterior one? Nope. The door is already set. So it would be from the door and we would transition up from the sill of the door. Okay. Up. That's why it's not quite two inches there because the sill of the door takes up some of that um, height. Okay. Okay. So we're looking into this further. Yes. So we'll hold on that one or combine it with the you know, with more information. All right, then we have proposed change order number 98. This is for additional dumpsters, toilets, cleanup, temporary protection, and shift premiums. All of these line items in the Verde contract were um, contracted for as allowances. And we have exceeded, um, and in all of these areas, they've exceeded their the allowance amount. This is for uh, costs incurred in September, uh, August, I'm sorry, August and September, a little bit of October, um, due to the extended duration of the construction work. Um, and at Johnson, it is in the amount of $24,254.77. On the shift premium, it goes 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15. 
Is that a, a typo or are we getting two shift previews? And I don't know. Um, I don't believe it's a typo. I don't. I, I also don't know the details of what the shift premium arrangements are. Um, presumably, um, crews from Verdi were working second shift. So I was hoping that Jim would have more information on this. Um, yeah, on the sure. Premium. I can I cannot explain why 814 is down there twice, but the shift premium is there was an allowance for Verdi for for overtime work. I, I think we should get a leak a clarification on that. I agree. It could be that it's it could be a typo, and it could be that because it, um, it attached be. to this. Well, I'm going to <clears throat> they have. Um, tickets attached to this PCO for all of those items. Obviously, since they're working under an allowance, um, I don't know if I can get all the way down to the shift premium ones. I mean, he may have gotten a date mixed up too, which is possible. That's what I suspect. Um, here's 11, Friday the 14th, fixed a temporary door. Uh, 20, 27, 28, 29, 31, 9, 18, yeah. 21. Nope, here's the shift premiums. All right. Um, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th. 13th. 14th and the 14th. Uh, let's see. So there's two different. This 13 was frame walls and sheath uh, install, temporary door at the fire alarm panel, three guys' names. On the 14th, we have other names that were carpenter premium time for four hours. And paper. So if you go down to the first, if you scroll down a little bit, Geraldine, is that an eight or a, that is an eight? Is that an eight or a six? So go down. I think they're, I think they're eights. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So they had two different groups of people. Oh, yeah. That, that, that clarifies. Yep. Yeah. Nice. So one was for one was for walls, and this other one was for um, they did have to create a temporary enclosure at the fire alarm panel out in the front um, at, at one point. So that's probably what that is. So if, if I, I just bring some, just want to bring something up. These are bills for for August. You got September, October, and November bills going to be way over. That the, is correct. So that was going to be my question too. Are we looking at another one that's going to be? Yeah, we would at least be looking at. I, I think potentially there's going to be another change order for um, parts of October into November and then also December at this point. And I yeah, and I, what I've asked is that we if we can get that projection over to Gerald and we'll get that over to her uh, so we can see exactly what that is. Uh, Jim, have you have you re reviewed these requests? I personally have not. Um, or, how about Ken? You know, Ken Ken's gone through these fairly diligently. Um, you know, this is this is the uh, basically the allowance items that are, are left, and really what's happening now is you've got essentially clean up and, and dumpsters and uh, porta sands at this point. And I would say, as Geraldine pointed out, you're probably approaching the, the end of that, but we should at this point have a pretty good idea of what that dollar value is. And, and I think these are not requests. They're, I mean, there are, are requests, but this, these are, this is work that's already been done and stuff that, you know, dumpsters that have already been correct, possibly and carted away. That's correct. And I will also say that in terms of dumpsters in the Verdi um, um, contract, in their bid documents, they were asked for a unit price on dumpsters and also on temporary, I'm sorry, on cleanup activities. 
in both, both of those line items, what they're charging us here is less than what they had stated as their unit price in their original bid documents. So to that end, they are, I think, just passing on, they are passing through an actual cost and not going back to the, I, because they had dumpsters listed at a thousand bucks a piece. So, so here we have three dumpster removals um, and then it was only $2,300. So, um, so I think the numbers are correct for the work that's been done. And every one of those tickets that I kind of leafed through for each of these instances was signed off on by the superintendent on the job, acknowledging that, that they agreed with the, the hours or the, the dates, whatever. Geraldine, I got a question for you. So have you carried these extra costs in your budget? We did not because it was not clear to us at the beginning of the project that any work under the project was being done under an allowance. Um, the, the budget was carrying a, you know, a GMP as a set cost. Mm -hmm. um, so we could be so, looking at at least another $24,000 for the next three months worth of bills that are gonna come in. I would, yeah, I would expect yeah. and maybe even a little more than that, yes. Yep. yep. Something else to put on the list. <laughs> yep. What list is that? Potential change orders yet to be yep. submitted. So yes, they will show up on that on that budget exercise going forward. Because I'm sure we got them over at Rockwell. You yep. you will see a similar allowance um, PCO for Rockwell this time. Yes, and and the projection of having to have another one before the end of the job. All right, well, we have to do something about this. So what's the what change order number is it? It's, it is 98. 98. Was there a motion to approve it? Uh, no, I, we've been discussing oh. it without I'll, a make, I'll make that motion. Okay, Roy makes the motion to approve change order number 98 in the amount of $24,254.77. I'll second it. Do we have any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Is anybody opposed? I'm giving you time to unmute if you need it. Motion carries. Give us some more good news, Geraldine. I'm sorry that I don't have any good news here. So this um, is uh, so this is PCO number 100. Um, something that we had started a discussion of, I believe, at the last meeting, probably before that. It has to do with the delay claim uh, made by QSR Steel for work that was done in August of 2019. Um, so, this, again, this, again is, wanted... this is the offer that we had gone back to QSR with for to, to settle this at 30000 um, They're agreeing to settle at the 30000 Their backup is what is shown here. So this is really an amount of thirty thousand, not thirty four one sixty. Yeah, they, for settlement purposes, he they they're willing to accept the thirty thousand. So should we change this, or should you write it up differently, and then we'll approve it, or should we approve it and you'll write it up? Or is the thirty thousand the amount, and it's got the um, Rizzo price tacked onto it? No, I mean, this still reads as at the 34,167. So where are we getting the 30,000 from, Jim? Uh, the 30,000 is the QSR amount. So they, they've, they're saying their cost with 34, they're agreeing to settle it at the 30 that we had spoken about at the last meeting. Okay. So then how do we handle this right now? What we should do is submit a change order to you showing the 30,000. Okay, so we'll do that next time. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right, then the final one to consider at Johnson 102. This is the cost now of the modifications to the steel at the front vestibule. This is the price provided by, by Marcelli Steel after cutting loose QSR um, over some of these other issues. 
Okay, so, so and Jim, is this working out well with getting this done, et cetera? Um, for, the, for the speed, yes. Um, you know, we were able to, with the help of uh, Corey from DTC, we were able to, this had originally been $50,000, so we were able to get, simplify that installation quite a bit. Um, you know, still, for everybody involved, it would have been a lot easier for QSR to just d do this, but um, you know, it's, we, we have to get that building closed in, so it has to, it has to get done. Well, and there was going to be an additional cost from QSR anyways, because there were changes yes. based on the yes. discovery that the existing roof of the vestibule when demolition um, was occurring, you know, we discovered that the, the walls that came out were holding up the roof, which was unknown. And so there was going to be a change to the steel in any case that was going to cost some money. I'm going to make a motion to approve the a a second. And John Menti seconds proposed change order 102 in the amount of $25,830. Um, I have a question. So it says it doesn't include building a weatherproof enclosure for the fire alarm panel soffit or the dismantling of, of both. So there's going to be an extra cost on that vestibule work to do those things? There's going to be. Um... Yeah, there's, there's an existing enclosure that's going to have to come down for us to get this work in. And then it has to get put back up? No, that doesn't have to get, that'll then be protected by the ballistic glass vestibule that we create there, which is contract work. So I'm, I'm going to guess that you've already paid for, or, or, or won't pay for, the temporary enclosure, but because the fire alarm panel was installed in an area that became open to the elements, that's what that's what they're talking about the enclosure that was built in order to protect right. that over the last winter. Got it. Right. Okay. That, 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 that was that's the temporary enclosure that's like there now. Correct. Correct. Got it. Yep. All right. Any other questions, comments, etc. On this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Okay, that's it for Johnson. Uh, so now we're going to move on to Rockwell. First PCO is number 82. This is to, um, to fill in an expansion joint an old expansion joint that was no longer necessary based on the change in roofing materials um, at the Rockwell roof. So something that was not known ahead of time. I'm going to say, yes, until they the demolished roof. the roof, yes. So when they came to it, what they had to do to continue roofing over it was cover it and then come back to it later. Uh, and do an installation. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we approve proposed change order number 82 in the amount of $4,663.49. Yeah. I'll, I'll second that. That's right. Yep. Any other questions, comments on this? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Anybody opposed? Done. All right, PCO 86. This Woo! is, oh, well, well, let me temper that a bit. Um, this is for the, the, um, the addition, the change in all of the roof supports for the duct work at Rockwell. If you will recall the initial um, change order that was presented that you all tabled a couple of meetings back was I think for about $140,000. At the time, it was only an estimate on the um, time and materials. Um, this is the final cost based on a time and material, uh, based on time and material documentation of the actual work, um, brought that estimate down uh, to the current change order of $74,584.98. I'm going to make a motion to approve it to get some discussion going. 
Yeah, we got we yeah. Who said that? David, sorry. Is that a second? Yeah. I'll second it. Yeah, I, I still I still have a big question as far as who's responsible for this. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I just don't understand, you know, why this wasn't picked up on the plans between the plans and the manufacturer and, and everyone involved. Uh, you know, I, I really have a, a concern about this. Well, and I have a tendency to want to think that it's, um, you know, if it, if it was, supposed to be installed according to plans and wasn't, that's one thing, but was installed according to plans and the installation was bad. That's to me a construction supervision thing and ought to be paid for, for through the owner's or the uh, construction contingency. I agree with that. But, but that's, not, that's not the case. What you have is you have an install per the detail we continue to disagree with that, Jim. I understand. I'm and, just responding to the question. Mm -hmm. And so am I. But, you know, when it goes back to the manufacturer, though, Jim, you know, if it's not going to be approved by the you know, by the uh, the roofing people, we're going to have a problem no matter how this goes. So that's that's why you know I, I just think that you know way the town is just you know we're just caught in between here this ping pong ball effect, and and I and I'm not really sure that it, it we had anything to do with this. You know, the, the only thing I'll, I'll point out to that is uh, the detail that you have up there now, the detail that they're working through now is, you know, and I, I don't know if Joe agrees or disagrees, it's far better than what even was shown on the contract drawing. That's good to hear. You know, and I, I absolutely agree. We got to move this along, Jim. I don't want to be holding this up, but I, I, I just still am, am really not comfortable that you know, we have to accept that that price. And, and the way we tried to approach this was to, no matter who was paying for it, keep the cost down as much as possible. I recognize that. The Mexican so, standoff. Well, I feel like it's a standoff too. I just, it's, it's a huge amount of money on a school that's already over budget and we're not going to get, you know, I, I know that Carolyn keeps doing the um, comparison budgets, which are hugely helpful and has included things like this in the potential expenses. And we're still looking at, you know, being under budget, under the total budget. Yet, I just... I don't know what to do. You know, the original drawings showed a totally different application, which really wasn't acceptable. And everybody agreed that somebody needed to do something better. And this was the, the outcome. It's a good point. I mean, you could have accepted the, the old way and have it blow off the roof. Right, right, right. Well, worse, it's a maintenance headache. Yeah. A maintenance headache, true. But why was the original design worse? Shouldn't have been. Although we don't think it was. And then Joe doesn't think it was. So, <laughs> of course. Well, I think the motion, the motion is there to approve. All right, any more comments or questions on that? The work is completed, Jim? It's the stands are up. Yeah, the stands are up. Yeah, it's in process. They've, they've started a lot of that, so. Um. All right, we're ready to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? 
I'm going to abstain. So am I. So we have two abstentions and it still passes. What's next? Uh, let's see. I need um, spot monitors at Rockwell. Yep. PCO 98. So this is similar to the issue at Johnson where we needed receptacles to power the um, dedicated monitors for the security cameras in the administration suite. This one at Rockwell only required two locations instead of Johnson's three. This is a change order in the amount of $2,332.45. Motion to approve. That's Dave Olson. Motion to approve 98 in the amount Geraldine just said. Who's seconding it? Second. That looks like Gil. Um, any other questions, et cetera, on this? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. No, no. Wait. Right. Oh, Bob's Bob's a no. Sorry, he was on. He was unmuting. So Bob's a no. All right. Um, change order ninety nine at Rockwell. This is to to um, install moisture mitigation measures on the concrete. Uh, at the gym prior to the pourable um, floor going in. Um, we, I, uh, somebody, either Jim or Joe, correct me, but I believe that, um, that the cause of this moisture issue, so they've tested the, the concrete. Um, it, there, it has too high of a moisture content to be able to adhere the new floor to. Um, I think that some, one, some cause of this issue is the fact that we ground down um, the floor in Rockwell to remove um, asbestos containing mastic and felt paper. Um, and I don't know for sure, but suspect that that's part of the, um, part of the cause of now having moisture creeping up through the concrete. But in any case, in order to um, adhere the floor they need to install moisture mitigation measures. Um, uh, Rizzo got a couple of prices, a uh, couple of different methods. This was the most cost effective at $5,398.26. Is I'll it make a motion to approve that. So Roy makes a motion to approve. I need a second. Second. Dave Olson seconds. I have a question on the, so is it the thickness of the floor that's creating more moisture to come up through, Jim? Um, you know, forgive me, Nancy, Ken's probably got more information for you on this one. Um, that would be, I agree with what Geraldine's saying. I believe it's related to that. And it's also related to the type of flooring that's being put down there. It's not your wood floor in that building. And it's the, so we had, got, we had gotten a price from that company as well, but they were substantially higher than what uh, the, the flooring company was. So is the um, the moisture mitigation a um, um, like a spray, some kind of a sealant that has to be it's put a, on? Yeah, it's a, exactly. It's a roll on. A, it's a roll on epoxy. Okay. Yeah. And the new material the mitigation before was the tar and the tar paper that was underneath the old floor. <laughs> right, which was glued yeah, down with yeah. the mastic that had to get ground off. <laughs> right, right. That was your mitigation yep. before. The new yep. material will adhere to this epoxy paint with no problem. We should, should have burnt yes. the school down. Yes, Dave, that, that we've coordinated that with the uh, installer. Thank you. Yep. And okay. John, I second what you said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So any other questions on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Done. All right, at Rockwell, PCO 100 is similar to the one at Johnson for allowances that have been exceeded um, in the cost of dumpsters, toilets, cleanup, temporary protection, and overtime costs at Rockwell. This total for September and October is $10,831.70.
and again, we'll probably get something similar to this for the rest of October, November, December. I would expect Correct. so, yes. It'll be in proportion as you see the price on rifles, obviously, it's smaller. Right, right. So I make a motion that we approve change order number. Is it 100? Yes, it is. And the amount of $10,831.70. Second it. The second from who? David Horvath, sorry. David Horvath, that's okay. I can't see everybody. So nice. any other discussion on this? On the other bill, the temporary protection was the lion's share of the amount. On this one, it's insignificant. Why such a difference? Just a smaller school, just less less uh, use of temporary walls and, and temporary protection there. Anything else? Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. Okay. Um, PCO 101 at Rockwell. Um, uh, let's see if I have this on. There is an additional uh, area of sidewalk required. Let's see if we can see where it is. At the exterior, this is the um, the outside door from the boiler room. Um, we needed to. There was there was no sidewalk between that door and the egress path. Um, and uh, I believe this is a building official requirement and also just a practical requirement to put uh, a concrete side so this uh, from that exterior door connecting to the other sidewalks in place. This is the new door that was put in the back side over there that they had to cut the foundation down as well. Is that the same door? It is. Yep. Yes. yes. Yep. Right. So they, this wasn't on the drawings originally. This was something. There was no. That's correct. There was no sidewalk. This, this twenty-six foot portion is what we're at. Yeah, it was. It was dropped off um, when the. This is actually the alternate. Um, so once the um, amphitheater at Rockwell wasn't accepted, yeah. um, this portion of the sidewalk was not captured in the alternate, and it's a code requirement for egress. Thank you. Thank you. And it, Did it have to be uh, concrete? Could have been an asphalt just coming out of the boiler room. But it connects into the other concrete walkways, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Could it... I make a motion we approve it? Um, a change order one hundred one, an amount of two thousand four thirty four oh five. Second. Okay, we got a second from Roy. Any more discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Done. All right. Um, PCO 102 at Rockwell. This is to add the, um, the, the stone beneath the wood. Um, railings at the front parking area um, in lieu of the weeds and the sort of unplanted area that ended up there. <coughs> that must be like really pretty stone for that kind of money. <laughs> I, think a, I think it's a lot of stone. Um, it's a large area. Aren't, yeah, aren't large. weeds cheaper? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, I know it's going to be quite a few yards. I get it. You know, I just want to comment. If, if we put a grass in there, you know, it, it would never get mowed. It would look, you'd have weeds up there to the top of the wood. It would look like hell. So, no argument. And it's, and it's actually not just the amount of stone. It's the fact that they have to sort of hand set it on in those small strips under the... Um, Mm -hmm. under the railings so did, did they put fabric underneath of it so the weeds don't grow up through it john i <laughs> hope so <laughs> all right what's the, what number is it i can't see the number now it is 102 102 make a motion that we approve change order number 102 in the amount of eight thousand eighty two dollars and sixty three cents to hand place each individual stone <laughs> 
<laughs> River Rock. Appropriate <laughs> place. I'll second it. Is that John seconding yes. it? Any more questions, comments, and snide remarks on this one? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? John. All right, the last issue is the bus loop um, alternatives. Let me see where I have those, 103 and 104. Um, I'll show you 104 first. This is the alternative to reconfigure both, uh, both sides of the curb approach in, in and out. I wonder if I have the drawing here. Yes, so this, well, it's a little flipped around. In this alternative, um, we are replacing and pulling back the curb on both the north and the, I think this is, I think this is north and south ends, and then filling in with pavement where you see the hatching. Mm -hmm. um, so to do both sides, the cost is $26,563.78. And the alternative is to do uh, just the one edge, just this um, northern side for $10,130.87. So wasn't there a, um, yes, like a, uh, I don't know if I'd call it a recommendation or whatever from Malone and McBroom on which one would work not which one would work better it was as yes as i recall this option so in for both both options we're solving or mitigating i don't know if it totally solves it but we're mitigating the issue with a bus pulling out of the driveway and having to cross the center line before it kind of aligns itself with the road mm -hmm. So this protects, by doing the northern curb, you protect the traffic that's on Whittlesley Drive. Yep. Um, what you pick up by doing this um, southern loop is you um, improve the conditions for a bus turning in to the driveway while there is a bus um, waiting to yeah. turn out who happens to be kind of encroaching on the center line. Got it. Um, the, and I think, as I recall, um, somebody else can jump in, is that I, I think in Malona McBroom's view, the more important one was this northern curb edge in order to protect the traffic that would be passing by on Whittlesley and that it would not be um, beyond industry standards to have a bus that's standing here, wait a couple of seconds, holding traffic back in fact, while the bus that's in the bus loop pulls out of the, pulls out of the drive. That's that's as I recall, that's the trade-off. That's that's correct. I, I actually got additional information from Dan tonight that okay, they calculated that there would be a two second delay for turning in if you don't do the uh, southern curb. Okay, so first of all, no, I disagree with you with a two second delay. You, uh, John that's, Menti, it's myself, not and uh, Terry Yansky were out there uh, at a heavy traffic time, and we got buses to actually come in and out of there. Um, I I think it's a safety issue, and it should be both sides corrected to correct that problem there. No, I'm we'll just see passing along the information. Right. So first of all, whoever's got whoever needs to mute themselves because they've got all kinds of feedback in the background. That's gotta happen. Thank you. So um, now we can hear what Rich was saying. Okay. I, I think it's a, a safety issue for 
uh, the buses pulling out, the people going down Whittlesey Drive. Whittlesey Drive is a fairly narrow road for the buses to, to travel on there. It's a heavily used road during uh, peak periods of, of the kids uh, being, especially now, a lot of people are bringing their kids to the schools and with the buses there. I, it's my recommendation that you approve both edges. And it's- and me, uh, the question would be, go back to Jim, would earth movers be uh, acceptable to doing that on a ticket time rather than a quote? You can have the discussion with them. Yeah, our earth movers concern was, does this, you know, it's a brand new school, does this even really solve your problem? If they'll do exactly what you're showing here, but their concern was, does this solve your problem? And, and they're thinking that it doesn't? For uh, uh, a bus making a right-hand turn with a bus sitting at that catch basin, it, uh, I don't see how, but uh, that was the concern. Hey, Jim, even with the uh, with the larger plan, the one, the plan with the improvements? Uh, you, you have a better shot of that um, with, the, with what Gerilyn has up on the screen right now. Uh -huh. Right. The, there was discussion of, of pulling that basin back a little bit when... Um, McBloom was out there. And plus it has to be raised up. They were concerned about how the, the depth of that basin was right there. Hey, hey Jim, I have, I I have mean, concerns. I, I, about... I don't want to go back to uh, hash. You just spent $8,000 on putting gravel under the fence for a non-safety issue. And I believe this is more of a safety issue. And, and Jim, I have concerns with earth movers making statements like that. Are they certified traffic engineers and civil not engineers? All, not at all, Joe. And that's why no, I, so I, 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 I only answered answer because I was asked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, don't, I have a current concern with him bringing that up and you bringing it up in the, in the meeting because this has been looked at um, thoroughly by Malone and Broom now. And right. We'll and and exactly also, what, we'll do exactly uh, what's shown there. Their traffic engineer was out there that day we were doing uh, the with the buses, mm -hmm. he was actually out in the middle of the road, you know, kind of marking where the buses were turning and stuff. And that's why they came up with this plan. And the, the ultimate goal is that this is going to be the drop off pickup buses here exactly. in the back with the loop that was created rather than the front that's being used now, correct? Hopefully yeah. after COVID that would, that would be the way to go, Nancy. Uh, right now, they can actually fit more cars and get them off of Whittlesea using the back right now. But um, but that was always designed as a bus loop. It was and always I think, designed I, as a bus loop. You right. know, I, I, I totally agree with Richie on this. You know, let's let's fix it right so it's a bus route, you know, so that we can use it when we when we get back to full capacity there. Yep. Okay. It makes sense. Good discussion. So now let's go back to, um, do we need to look at the plans anymore? Or are we ready to do the change order? I'm gonna make a motion that it would be the change order for the 26,000, the, the larger one, uh, uh, boy, 26,563.78. Correct, change order 104. Do we have a second? Uh, is that John Menti? I'll second. All right, um, so we have a, Motion a second, and I think we discussed it to death. Um, <laughs> unless anybody has anything more. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just had uh, back to Jim. Do you think that it's worthwhile talking to Earth Mover about possibly doing it on a ticket? I can. I would just be concerned about delaying this process with us running out of pavement. Yeah. No. Time. No. All right. Move along. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Good, we're ready to go. Thank you. That's, That's it for change orders. So now, Gerilyn, as you said, when you put up, and I said earlier, um, when you put up the that combined budget exercise thing, um, you're including a lot of these as potentials. So um, we're not in a place of being. Wrong one. Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, so in my in this analysis um, presented earlier, I did assume that you were going to adopt um, all those things okay. that you did. 
including the duct supports, the bus entrance, at the, the bus, bus work at the higher amount, uh, the overtime claim by QSR, all of these numbers are already built into a total project cost that will still result in um, a, a leftover contingency of a million sixty-three six eighty-five. Okay. I, I have a question for, for Geraldine and, and Jim and Joe. Using your crystal ball, do <laughs> anticipate any more unforeseen large change orders now that we're at the 90% mark of this project. It, it seems like we just got hit with a lot of them. That, but I mean, he's, I'm not worrying about the $2,000 or $1,000. I'm talking about the twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 change. Do we foresee anything that could possibly cause um, a large change order coming in? I would see that, that getting Gerald in that cleanup number is going to be important that whatever the projection or whatever, at this point, we should have a pretty good idea of what's been spent to date on the cleanup. The other thing would be some of the unknowns is uh, you know, with the Ferguson's actionaires, if, if they're going to submit any sort of a, a claim or anything like that, um, and there, there will be some of that, I'm sure. You know, especially subs that get affected by things like those PCB removals. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if something came out. We don't have any information now, but you know, sometimes the longer time goes by, the better. But it wouldn't surprise me as we, we get to the end that some something wouldn't come out of those things. And I am still on this analysis, still carrying um, for, for both schools some additional PCO projected costs that we think are gonna come in, but I don't have pricing yet on. Um, one of the things would be this retaining wall at Johnson. If we don't do the retaining wall and just do the slope and move the dumpsters, maybe that comes in at a lower price than what I've been carrying. So that million dollar net contingency also includes an assumption that we're gonna spend some more money in here um, on those additional costs. Okay. And you you haven't yet um, adjusted the budgets for like, and it's not a lot of money, but it's some um, for places like in FF and E where we didn't spend as much as we correct. anticipated. That's correct. But it's included in that bottom line number. That's right. And also up here, I am still carrying those numbers for the Ferguson feeder issues that I presume are still someplace on Rizzo's table with them. So the 20,000 at Rockwell and the 100,000 at Johnson. So those are also all still built into this, this total, assuming you're gonna to have to pay those amounts. So I do believe that we're being conservative in this analysis still at this point. Okay. Any other questions from anybody on this for Geraldine? Okay. Um, professional services. Yes. Geraldine. Yep. Did you, I, I had to step away for a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, did you have any discussion about those cleaning costs that we? Um, not yet. Those will come up under invoices. Okay. Very good. So that's not what I wanted to do. Um, so yes, Perkins. Um, I Joe, I took the liberty of taking your information and putting it into a tabulation that might be easier for the commission to understand. So this is information that um, kind of in response to Dave Olson's question at our last meeting of you know, where we were, where we are, where we're going, and et cetera. So um, Joe sent out the email and Gerilyn put it into kind of a spreadsheet looking thing that was then sent out to everyone for review, yet we haven't really had time to have any kind of discussion among our um, subcommittee. But this was sent out in advance of the meeting. So um, if anybody has any questions, um, and, and this is Joe, um, where we are right now, and a little bit of anticipation, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. In that green section, it looks like. Yeah. Yep. It. 
so it's still if, if you're looking at it um, has as Gerilyn has put in some of the um, amounts of where we are with our contingency plus and minus um, especially at Rockwell minus and um, still because in the pr prior budget analysis that we were looking at and Gerilyn has been carrying this um, throughout the in, the entire time that she's putting together this the, between the two schools budget analysis, the original amount that was requested by um, Perkins Eastman, and you know carrying that larger amount, and this has um, the kind of a reduced amount, which is more realistic of you know where from the time that. The proposal was given to us and then where we are as they've gone through the um, construction administration. Any questions from anybody? I think it's something that we have to uh, digest and uh, talk with the subcommittee on put a, yeah. put a uh, group just keep keep the discussion going. Right and and keep um, again keeping the the entire budget in mind. Um, as Correct. We, continued to incur more change orders and other issues. So, but thanks Gerilyn for, thanks Joe for getting the information together so quickly and Gerilyn for putting it into um, this comparison, which I think is uh, helpful. So we'll have to look at having another uh, subcommittee meeting and uh, taking a look at this. Oh, are we at invoices? We are at invoices. Okay. Invoices. Um, so I have, I think I have all the paper copies. I just want to keep up with which ones we've okayed. So I can deal with them as I usually do. So if you just want to start, I have them kind of in the order that they came when you emailed them, but does, so I have Arco Router first. So I don't know if that would, if you get the one that I'll just find the one. Okay. So um, this is for an initial clean out at Johnson of the, the drain, septic drain lines. Um, so this is for one of the cleanouts. Yes, um, you have. I think last meeting or the meeting before, we had uh, already approved one um, similar invoice, probably about two hundred dollars to clean out um, um, that line. This is for yet another cleanout. We will be seeing a um, an invoice next meeting for the scoping work that was done to determine the pitch of the pipe, and then of course. Once we go through the auguring and the cleaning, we'll see an invoice. So these are the ongoing um, invoices to explore what's going on there and, and try to get us enough information where we can come up with a solution. So the, the scoping was already done? The scoping was done last, um, not, la not this past weekend, but the Saturday before that. So the scoping was done, a report was generated indicating the pitch of the pipes, um, this is what led to the further discussion with DTC where they recommended augering the pipes because that line had previously been part of the art room, um, you know, uh, water drainage system and perhaps there's some something in the in those pipes from years of art room debris going through them. Um, so yes, this but this invoice is for one of the interim um, cleanouts that they came to do when it backed up into the nurse's office corridor. Right, and, and when they determined the pitch, was the pitch determined adequate? Well, so I, what I'm saying is that, that the invoice for that work um, I, is, uh, Rizzo had gotten a copy of it, but we hadn't received it yet. This is just for one of those blow through the, the plugging and- Right, you know, the yeah, best. I'm asking not as part of the invoice, but is the pitch determined oh. to be adequate? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's just a whole other question. All right, so I make a motion that we approve invoice, Arco Router invoice number 80467 in the amount of 
Second. Roy seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. I have two of those. All right, and then whatever's next. There is an invoice from ESC for security installation work at Johnson. Yep. I make a motion that we approve invoice from Environmental Service Systems Corp for security work at Johnson, invoice number 1186510 in the amount of $2,850. Second. Royce or Dave Olson seconds. Thanks. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. Next. Uh, I have a number of Perkins Eastman invoices or? It um, doesn't matter. I can, we can do those. We got Belfour, we got you fill a play, and we got EnviroMed. So well, let, with... let's go down to AltiPlay. Okay. So this is for um, playground installation. Last month, you uh, approved the invoice for the actual purchase of the equipment. This is for the installation of the equipment. And as I reported earlier, um, both schools are completed except for the final um, certification by Malona McBroom and the handoff of the maintenance kits. So. Okay, so this I, is I make a motion that we approve the invoice from Ultiplay Invoice number 9867 for Johnson School. Yep. In the amount of $46,248.00. Second. Second from Dave Olson. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. And then also for Rockwell installation. Okay, I make a motion that we approve invoice from Ultiplay, invoice number 9868 for Rockwell in the amount of $34,408. Second. Dave Olson second, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Done. All right, let's do Perkins Eastman now. Um, let's see. Johnson for construction administration services. Okay, hang on, I gotta get to it. So make a motion that we approve invoice from Perkins Eastman number 68962. Dot zero zero dot zero dash three three for Johnson School in the amount of seven thousand seven hundred and eighty nine dollars and fifty four cents. Second. Second from whoever made the second. John Menti. John Menti. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. Nancy. Dave Olson. The Perkins Eastman's invoices are these. Uh, are these above and beyond the contract value yet? No, they can't do that. The only parts, so there's, um, so there's the construction administration, and then you'll see there's uh, FF&E, and then there's, um, Anything that we approved additional, like I think there's the one for the fence. Yeah. yeah. So these these two construction administration invoices, like the one we're seeing here, they are billing a percentage of completion that is commensurate with the construction completion. So for instance, so they're at 93% here and the amount is $4,614. That is against their original contract amount. But of course we, know that they actually have spent more time, for instance, in this previous month than $4,000, which would be about, you know, 12 hours or something. So um, they are they're billing against their original contract and have not yet billed for all the other additional time that they are tabulating under the additional services amount. But, but which we have actuals for for the last several months. 
Correct, since March, yep. Okay. Which is part of the um, exercise that we looked at. Right. Yep, right. Okay. All right, so this is Rockwell um, Construction Administration. Make a motion that we approve invoice number from Perkins Eastman, invoice number 68961.00.0-33. Second. In the amount of $4,614.02. Second. Dave Olson, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. All right. Um, let's see, what do I have here? FF and E for Johnson. Yep. So I make a motion that we approve invoice number 68962.01.0-15, FF and E for Johnson, Perkins Eastman, in the amount of $5,140. Second. Dave Olson, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. Uh, let's see. Stephanie for Rockwell. Stephanie for Rockwell. Stephanie for Rockwell. Fourth one over. Right there. This one? Yeah, 0.01. Oh, I was. It's, 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 yeah, the, <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's labeled as four, which it should where it should be 14. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so I make a motion that we approve Perkins Eastman invoice number 68961.01.0-14 for Rockwell FF&E in the amount of $5,502.38. Second. Seconds, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. Sure. Two more. Yeah. Let's see what else we have here. We have um, Johnson site work. Site work, yep. So to, to your point, Dave, these are some additional uh, amounts that we approve. So I make a motion that we approve invoice number 68962.04.0-1 uh, for Johnson site work in the amount of $3,593.75. Dave seconds, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Done. And we should have one more. Yep. Well, nope, that's not that one. Uh, this one. Yep, that's it. Yep. So I make a motion that we approve invoice from Perkins Eastman, invoice number 68961.04.0-2. For Rockwell School, the fence revision in the amount of $997.50. Second. Dave Olson seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. We have a couple more invoices. We do. So, um, why don't we do environment first? So, this is. This is an invoice for, this is an older invoice for EnviroMed. Um, Why is it old? Uh, because it, this is an invoice for the monitoring and um, testing that had to be done at Rockwell uh, when they were cleaning the debris from the roof demolition from above the finished ceilings. And we had submitted this invoice to Rizzo to be paid from the construction side since the reason for the cleaning of the debris above the ceilings was on the um, either the construction sequencing and phasing or uh, responsibility of the roofing contractor for not protecting those ceilings. Um, but um, it was not paid and we were getting calls from EnviroMed about why this invoice had not been paid. So in the interest of not delaying that account any further, I'm bringing this invoice to the building committee to authorize payment on, and then outside of, of the billing arrangement with EnviroMed, we can talk about how we try to recover this money from the construction side. But so as not to hang up EnviroMed any longer, um, I'd like an approval on this invoice to be paid because they're essentially done with all of their work. 
Is this something that can be part of the going to the office of school construction? Um, yes, it actually may. I don't know, it wouldn't be in there yet. Um, it should be, yes. It should be something that we could recover for them if it is going to be end up being a town cost. What's the total price? I can't see the bottom, sorry. Sorry. Well, because that's like the last page. So it's $12,657.40. Thank you. So you're saying let's pay them, but we're still going to have to haggle? Well, I'm saying let's pay them in order for, because they are they are billing the town. Their, their arrangement was with, their contract was with the town. Got it. Um, so I'm saying, yes, please, let's pay them and at least make them whole and then um, then discuss further how this $12,657.40 can be pushed over to the construction side. I um, Originally, when we talked about this, I think Rizzo had proposed um, sending this over to um, young developers, the roofing contractor. I just don't know whatever happened with yeah. that. I don't think this should be a haggle, Nancy. This this clearly should be on Young's development. So yeah, um, I John, think we can talk about we can talk about that. This this shouldn't be uh, a dispute about this. But if we approve it and pay it, how do we recoup it? Um, yeah, I and I I talked with Ken about this and didn't really get a good sense that Rizzo was going to pursue it with young developers any further. So I don't know, Jim, if you think that um, it's worth- Yeah, there's no doubt. Yeah, there's no doubt this has to go to Young's. Okay, but I'm, so I do still have a concern though about a timely payment to EnviroMed, so. Um, yeah, and I would, I guess part of that would be, we don't have an agreement. That would be my guess. And I'm, I, I'm only guessing at this is that we don't have an agreement with EnviroMed. So that would create an issue there, but. Um, so to go back with, to what Gerilyn's saying is that we ought to get it paid and then not haggle about it, but deal with where, where that money should go in the budget. Agreed. Okay. So we, instead of discussing it further, I'll make the motion we can discuss it under that and make a motion that we approve uh, invoice from EnviroMed Services, invoice number 19049 in the amount of $12,657.40. Second. Roy seconds. So any more discussion? How do we make sure that it goes over to young developers? It's just going to happen. Yes. Well, it should have already gone over to them. Now it's just a question of the bookkeeping of how to uh, make that adjustment. Okay. So any other questions on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. And then the last. The best is last, the last is best. Which one do you want to put up there? The bigger one or the even bigger one? How about the even bigger one? Mm -hmm. Don't faint. So if we have two invoices from Balfour for cleaning at the schools in preparation for them to open on September 8th. Um, and uh, Procedure wise, um, I think what happened is that the um, Dr. Carver and other members of the district walked through the schools prior to um, them opening for the fall and realized that the, condi the cleaning condition was not acceptable to them uh, and uh, contracted with their own cleaning contractor, Belfour, to do a deep clean of both schools prior to them opening. Um, at Johnson, that bill amounted to $51,690.79. And uh, you'll see a comparable one at Rockwell, but only in the amount of $23,592 and some cents. Because it's a smaller school. Because it's a smaller school. Um, we did. Have, we did. We had a discussion um, at a Thursday meeting 
at a couple of Thursday meetings with Rizzo about these invoices and um, I'm pretty sure Jim, you were not present, but Ken's feeling was that they, that you had done your own cleaning and that's what you were responsible for providing. Um, and so that this was over and above um, what the construction side was obligated to do in order to prepare the schools for occupancy. And so um, Rizzo was not going to entertain taking on these, um, these costs. And similar to the environment bill, um, in talking with Terry, we, we want to get them paid because these, again, are bills coming to uh, the school district and not to the construction um, side. So uh, really the um, Board of Ed is on the hook for these amounts um, and we don't want to make these accounts delinquent. Um, so we're looking for an approval. So are these amounts that are going to come out of our contingency. They are at this point, yes. At this point, there's and Rizzo saying it's not my job. We already cleaned. Well, yeah, it, it goes beyond. It goes beyond that. The, the, the understanding we had these people were being brought in because there was a higher level of cleaning needed because of the COVID issues. You know, no, that point, was that was not the case, Jim. The case was Dr. Carver. And, and administration walk through those buildings and those buildings may have been cleaned in terms of construction clean. They were not cleaned uh, to a level uh, that prepared the buildings for staff and students to arrive to start school. And, and we got so pushed to the end um, that um, the, this had to be done or or there was no way we could have staff and students in those buildings. So Dr. Carver said um, get and it was well beyond what our custodians were going to be able to manage in the last couple of days before the opening day of school. So um, so we brought in Belfour, who was a, co a company that the town of Bethel has a, a standing contract with um whenever we have um any kind of um crisis kind of thing and, but they also do thorough cleaning they did walls desks floors windows they did they the did everything from top to bottom I, I just have a question as far as you know i mean we get this bill of, of 51 almost fifty-two thousand. i mean there's no breakdown is this done under overtime Time hours is you know I, I mean my question is is you know is is some of it Rizzo uh, attributable which you know Jim is saying it's not uh, but by the same token you know that that's a big difference I don't know what's originally planned there and and you know I, you know I, I I have no idea what this what this entails is there is there further breakdown regarding this. Oh, the, the bill had pages and pages, Geraldine. I'm not sure if you had. Oh, I don't. I just had the, the cover, the sort of the bill. The, the I spot. mean, is this is, was this done all as uh, an overtime? I mean, why is it so high? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Roy, they started early in the morning and they worked until late at night. We had to keep the buildings open for them to, uh, to complete it. And, and you're talking about, you said they cleaned walls, they cleaned desks, they cleaned. And was this type of cleaning um, really should it, what, this is a question, not an observation, but a question, was this type of cleaning included somewhere in contract documents for Rizzo, the construction manager? Should they have been responsible for cleaning desks and walls, etc. Well, let me let me chime in for a second. When we say we're cleaning desks and lockers and stuff, this was debris that was on it. I'm just saying debris. It, it right. was just this, this was this was furnished equipment, you know, complete set up classrooms right. that looked like a bomb went off in them. I mean, so, that's, it, it was above and beyond. I, I got to agree with Terry. It was above and beyond. Right. And it, is it something that should have been the responsibility of Rizzo to either protect before the dust got all over everything or to clean up 
in response. Well, it was every, every vendor, every trades that came in and out of those classrooms. And uh, they didn't pick up behind themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, even my even my custodians were putting ceiling tiles in. So, so Bob, you you your feeling is what some of it is attributable to the uh, Rizzo portion. Well, I'm not going to sit and throw rocks at Rizzo, but yes, I I do agree that um, some of this was not really a construction clean. This was not. Yeah, I, clean. You know, yeah, I, I realize everything was was rushed as as things had to happen. But, you know, I'm just, you know, should there have been an extra line item in the in the uh, Rizzo's work to take care of this? Or is this part of Rizzo's normal, normal cleanup that at least should have been uh, reasonably clean? Roy, I don't believe we were making the deadline for opening school. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, I think that's what it came down to trying to, you know, trying to get everything ready to actually open school. And, yeah. and the, the place was filthy uh, in terms, not filthy, like, but it, with construction dust and dirt and debris and, and um, you know, the windows, even the windows were dirty. So, I mean, everything had to be, how do you spend, how do you spend $65 million and have staff walk into school the first day and have it look like, like a bomb went off? So, so the superintendent said, to get commercial level cleaning done in those buildings so that um, the, the kids and the staff that work at Bethel Public Schools were arriving at a, at a, a, in an environment that was ready for teaching, teaching and learning. I, you know, the, Terry and Bob, I think none of us are questioning the need to have it done. Yeah. We're trying to get to... Yeah. Who's and I don't think it was, I don't think it was a planned, I'm going to say, I don't think this was planned. I think it happened because of um, timing of getting yeah. ready to open on time. Yeah, I don't disagree. And I think that I, I'm not going to tell you there was a line item anticipated for it. It just, we would not have been able to open. And, and our custodians, I mean, the Board of Ed paid the custodians a lot of extra hours and what our custodians did was move everything because you had to keep moving things in order to be able to clean. So we had the entire custodial staff in that we paid a lot of overtime to in order to make it feasible for Belfort to even do the cleaning. I mean, it was an all hands on deck for about four or five days to get those buildings in shape um, in order to open on time. So Jim, what was the expectation that Rizzo had for the cleaning necessary to open school? So, and again, I, you guys feel very passionately about this, so I understand, and I'm not going to argue. We'll, we'll defend ourselves. We feel that we've, uh, you know, had cleaning in the contract, that this cleaning was, if, if we're saying now that this cleaning had nothing to do with COVID, and it was strictly Rizzo, I would have expected there to have been some notice, something where, hey, we're going to go spend this money on your behalf. And that's not what happened. And, you know, again, whatever your decision is, we'll defend ourselves. We have photos, we have whatever, whatever we need to do that. At the end of the day, it certainly wasn't an intention to put you guys in a position where you had to spend $60,000 on cleaning. Yeah. Just a you know, lot of and, and Terry, when you when you talked about the schedule again, you know, you guys talk about what you're worried about with subs. What we've been trying to do is hold the subs down as far as that seven hundred thousand dollars worth of PCB removal. Think of every single trade, including your cleaning people, who got compressed in there. And, that is, and the, I'm not disagreeing with that. I, I mean, what it happened the way it happened, Jim. And, yeah. and everybody there, wanted there's a to stay on schedule, oh, so I, that's that's where we landed. There's a relationship, though, and I think it's important. As if if I'm if you're the board that's overseeing all of this and the budget, it's important to keep that in mind that there is a relationship there. Yeah, I just I, <laughs> it, it's all water over the dam. It had to happen. I just I I'm just not too sure, you know, whether whether. If we if we had pushed it through Rizzo's side of it more, so at least they handled it all, would it have been cheaper? So it's water. It's like again, it's water over the dam. So 
had to happen. So I'm going to make an, uh, a motion to approve cell four invoice number 1449255 in the amount of, try not to choke when I say it, $51,690.79. I'll second that. Roy seconds it. Any more discussion, questions, etc.? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. And the next one, which is less, because it's a smaller school. Oh boy. I make a motion that we approve cell four invoice number one four four nine three one six for Rockwell School in the amount of twenty three thousand five hundred and sixty two dollars and fourteen cents. I'll second that too. Got a second from a couple of people. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. Can we spend any more money? No, Oops. we're done. Woohoo. All right. So there's lots of things that um, everybody should have on their lists that need to get taken care of by various and sundry people, both our committee, subcommittees, etc. And our next meeting is December, something like the 7th or the 8th. Something like that. The eighth. The eighth. Okay. And I'm assuming, well, Geraldine already said um, no meeting this week. So the next um, job site meeting will be next week. Yep. Does anybody have any other input, questions, et cetera? Nancy, did you get a chance to talk to your members about the plaque? Oh. Oh, we haven't done that yet. So. I don't have a list of names yet. One of the things that's in the process of being uh, put together are the plaques that will go in each school with all the information on it of um, you know the architect, the contractor, et cetera, et cetera. And then our names get put on it too. So what I need to, what I'm gonna do, um, and Terry and I had a conversation last week, um, we decided that a good, and I want to get some input from you, a good sort of date to start with as far as names of uh, public site and building commission members would be the date that the referendum was passed. So there are a few people who are new, newer, your names are still going to be on, and then a few people who were part of the project when we got started. Um, the two I'm thinking of are Josh Adams and Victor Halamikoff. And I'll have to check back to old minutes to see if I'm missing anybody. Dan Nostin will probably be on the Board of Ed side since he's on the Board of Ed. Um, Correct, so. because it will include the Board of Selectmen, the, um, the Board of Education, and, uh, and of course, the Permanent Building, Public Site and Building Committee uh, will all be listed. So um, Dr. Carver had suggested us using both for the Board of Ed and the, and the Building Commission, um, the date the referendum passed, which you said, Nancy, was? October 17, 2017. October 17, 2017. And we, the idea is to make sure we're inclusive and uh, not put up one plaque and then have to put up an addendum plaque. So, <laughs> so we're not like trying to cut people out but we, you know, we're not going to go back to, you know, 2010. But, um, but we, we, so we went with the date of the um, that the referendum passed. So we feel anybody that was involved uh, since then, that's pretty much the lion's share of, of, yeah. of everyone. So, if the committee members could think think about that, is anybody uncomfortable with that or comfortable with that? And what I'll do is I'll email everybody because what we need to know is how you want your name written on the plaque. So do you want your full, long, and involved name? Do you want? Do you a, want your middle initial? Do you? Because I always use my middle initial. Um, you know, does Dave Olson want to be Dave or David? So I'll email everybody to find that out. I want an O and not E N. 
<laughs> we'll spell your name right because you can't erase those plaques. You can't just get your eraser out and fix it. So I'll email everybody to find out how you want your name spelled and I'll check in with Josh and um, I guess I'll have to call Victor. <laughs> and, and Nancy, once we get the submittal in from Rizzo, yeah. we should be forwarding it to everybody to double check all the spelling and name. Okay, that's good to know. We want our name spelled right for until the day. And, and Sue Perret, Dr. Carver's administrative assistant, is putting it all together so that you have sort of a photo ready um, something to work with, Joe and 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 Jim. Okay. Thanks for bringing that up, Terry. I kind of forgot. So. Sending and you're going to look back and make sure we're not missing any major players, right, Nancy? Yeah. I'll check some minutes and I can check um, the list that the town clerk has too. Okay. Don't forget to add $2,000 for consider for everything. <laughs> <laughs> and and then I just want to say, uh, you know, of course, this is a lot of work and, and, and uh, on behalf of the board of ed, we, um, we appreciate everyone who has, who has served on the, um, Public Site and Building Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But thank you all for, thank everybody for all the work we're doing. I know we disagree on things, and but that's part of the process. Exactly right. And as um, Dave and David and Roy and I saw when we walked around last week, we, there's a lot of progress that's been made, a lot. And we didn't see a lot of kids, but we saw a lot of staff who were very happy, so. All right, so are we good public site people? You can't go away, we have things to do. One, oh, maybe we can't. One, two, three, four, is Menti still here? Yes, five, we have five of us, okay. All right, so if we're done with school stuff, you guys can sign off and we'll see okay, you in a thank couple. thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a nice Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, we have to do some other business. So uh, on the police station, we have, a, we don't have to go in order here, but um, there, there's, been communication back and forth between Downs and um, Chris Baldwin. I'm getting the CO. My understanding is that the paperwork is in process and so it should be in hand shortly. Um, there were a few items that Chris was insisting uh, needed to be taken care of. Those got taken care of by Downs. I think Downs was out there last week, the beginning of the week, and walked around with Chris and um, and then there was a couple emails that I was included in so I could see that uh, the paperwork was, was, Chris was saying he was gonna give us, the building commission, the CO, but I said that it needed to go to Downs to come to us because Downs was the one that pulled the permit, yeah. which is the normal process, which is why I don't understand they didn't pull the, or get, get the whole thing done a year ago because it was about, well, but it was about January, February when a lot of the stuff that needed to be remedied, including the tactile warning strips, et cetera, the flagpole lights got finished. Um, so I'm not sure why they were waiting on it, but they did and we're almost done with that. Um, we still have that Downs um, application for payment, which I would like to have CO in hand before we um, handle that. I agree. Okay. And um, so punch list warranty outstanding items, there should not be any of those remaining. And on the agenda, the other object or item is uh, the firing range and um, discussion on that is going to um, require us, at least part of it, to go into executive session. So do I have to, I can't remember because we do it so infrequently. Do I have to make a motion? Yes. yes. 
You have to make a motion and then you like, yeah. um, I'm not sure who Mr. Reed is. He would not be able to go in. Right. So that, that you would put and you'd have to invite me in. Right. So I'm going to make a motion that we um, discuss the anticipated litigation. We go into executive session and um, invite Kathy in and all, all commission members attending. Everyone else will have to be uh, put in the waiting room. I need a second. Second. Four guests, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And Robert Reed signed off, but is there a way to, you have to stop the recording, right? Yep, I have to stop the recording. Okay, and then is there a way to make sure that like there's no one else lurking? Well, technically the, the um, I'll look to see, but I, they're, like I said, they're supposed to, I'm supposed to admit them in, but Sometimes they seem to get in even without me doing that now. So I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to stop the recording now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the other thing is the municipal center um, lobby renovation, which Richie wanted us to put a RFP out and get a number to start sticking in the budget stuff. So the RFP needs to be updated. And I guess I, Going back to the whole thing of writing RFPs. I don't know how to write them. We're all making it up as we go along. So I'm going to have to look for the one that we had marked up and um, sent to Marty for John. I don't know if you remember. Um, we sent one to Marty and he sent comments back that said um, basically it was a lot of more language kind of stuff of you right. know make the length sound the same. I thought we I thought we did all that. Um, I, I thought we did I all that don't and, and, remember. and have to find we made it. those changes and, and um, I can't think the architect was supposed to finish up writing the RFP for us. So, well, no, the architect wrote what we asked them to write and we right. gave it to Marty and Marty said, uh, Marty made and recommendations made yeah. and I don't know if we ever, I don't know as we did, but I'm going to have to check. I, I thought we did it and I don't know and, where it from there. Well, I'll have to look. A lot of the stuff that needs to be changed are dates. And so we'd have to do dates. And um, the biggest thing I wanted from Marty is how much of a, you know, do you ask for a bond, bid bond or whatever? And, you know, if we're getting, trying to get prices together, it's different than I have to look back in my documents and see what I can find. So are we done? Kathy's like, yeah, I think she's trying to tell us it's time to end the meeting. So I'm going to make a. I agree. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion to adjourn, and I will say Happy Thanksgiving too. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Take care. I need, a second, I need a second. I need a second, and now I need a vote. Favor. Right. Favor. Hey, Happy Thanksgiving. Go away. <laughs> See, there is somebody there. Kathy's talking to. She's not the cat. <laughs>